This is a day that's been circled on many people's calendars since last late May when the Lancers fell to O'Fallon in the sexual semifinal, losing a second set just barely 27-25 after O'Fallon led 24-23. The Lancers were able to tie but force a point twenty-seven that would go to O'Fallon ending Bevel East this season. O'Fallon would go on and win that next Tuesday against Lincoln Way East and get to the state tournament for the second time in back-to-back -back years and would become the first Metro East team to win a game in the state tournament advancing to the semifinal. They would ultimately lose the next two games to finish in fourth place. Another successful season for the Panthers and this season is exactly the same as that. They open up the year 12-2-2, Beverly East 18-2, two big conference rivals. This is a game that Man, it's going to be a good one. We welcome you in here to Beverly Student Stock with you. Glad to have you along on a Thursday afternoon. We are beginning with JV, and you might be saying, well, JV, I mean, does that does it really matter? Well, it does matter because these two teams have already played this season in Beverly Student's JV tournament a few weeks ago, and the Lancers lost to O'Fallon for their only loss of the year. O'Fallon would win Beverly Student's JV tournament. And now a rematch in the making here today between O'Fallon and Beverly. So a lot of line JV, of course. Beverly wants to get back at O'Fallon, tie the season series up. And then Beverly East Varsity has not beat O'Fallon since 2021. They're coming in with a record of 11 and 36 all time in program history with nine straight losses. A lot of line. And so we will look you in. JV getting ready to begin here. Lancers back at home after a huge win on Tuesday at Slough High. Unbelievable win, and that was a great one. And if you have not heard the news, Beverly East was the first Illinois team to knock off Slough High in their own gym in Slough High's program history. Beverly East became the first Metro East team to knock off Slough High last year, as O'Fallon has not beat Slough High, Edwardsville has not beat Slough High, Battle West has played Slough High and has not won, and Altoff has not won either against Slough High. Beverly did that last year, get their first ever win for a Metro East team against Slough High, and then were able to knock off Slough High for the first ever Illinois team to knock them off in their gym. And now JV will look to rebound from a loss at O'Fallon's on the board first, as Drew Knightsling unable to handle that one. Libero in the middle for the Lancers, and O'Fallon has a quick point, and it's 1-0. O'Fallon is in kind of a pinstripe jersey, which I, I like those, playing little baseball jerseys. Augie Enriquez with the response. And we're tied up at one here for JV. Augie Enriquez responds very quickly. It didn't take that, take long to start off. And out there for the Lancers, who hated Knights will have your opening serve for Bubba East. He's followed by Mario Randall, Joey Reich, Brody Kais, Augie Enriquez, and then Logan Day came out for Joey Reich. And of course, the Libero is the junior, Drew Knightsling. Lancers in the home Columbia Blues with the Libero rocking a black jersey. And... Geis and Enriquez couldn't handle the block on that side. It falls on their side. And it's 2-1. O'Fallon has taken the lead back in this one. Lancers were able to take the first set. First set, JV was, was able to take the first set at Slew High on Tuesday. Took the first but lost the next two. Right side, Enriquez just a little bit too strong and out. And it's 3-1 in favor of O'Fallon. Do not have O'Fallon's... Uh, JV roster, so I'll have to call it by jersey number, but of course, you know, you have Bevel East, of course. Three to one. So JV, uh, after that, before that loss to Slew High, as Geist could have get it over, it's four to one. That only loss was to O'Fallon, and you look at that, that's pretty good. You can lose to Slew High, who's five and three. They've played, obviously, all those tough teams in Missouri. They're six and three now, and uh, you'll take that. So we're 12 and two. Now on the season, four to one. Enriquez, Knightsling, back to Augie. Little tip over on the left side. O'Fallon, play it left side. Great dig by Drew. Gets it to his brother Hayden and Reich. Sends a free ball over. Not going to fall in bounds as he try to go back left corner. It just missed. And O'Fallon is off to an early start. It's five to one here. Trying to set the tone on a Thursday afternoon. And only... Beverly Sport an event today. Softball against Civic Memorial was postponed again. That's going to go out, and the Lancers will get a point five to two. Chase Nesbitt will come in for Mario Randall. And that's crazy to think softball. They were supposed to play Civic Memorial during spring break. That game got postponed due to the raid, and here we are again. And that game postponed again against the Eagles. So we will 
uh, wait and see if there's another make update. Hopefully there is, but I think it'll hopefully all work out. Maybe one more game we can break to you as the Lancers serve is into the net by Enriquez, and it's 6-2. to two. Well, Fallon playing early here, and then they, they've had a very good program. The JV, I did not get to call any JV between O'Fallon and East last year because O'Fallon was here when Edwardsville was taking on the baseball team, and Enriquez tried to kick it to keep it alive, and it's seven to two as he was unable to follow it up. It's seven to O'Fallon in this first set to open things up, but we were out doing baseball against Edwardsville. And we did not get to do this for the any, the any of the two regular season matchups between the Panthers and Lancers. We did have that sexual semifinal game for you from Belleville West. As Nesbitt just hits it over on a free ball after a little miscommunication by the Lancers. On the right side, hard swing, put down good. Kill for the Panthers, and it's 8-2 early. JV is not looking the way that we usually see them. They've you played, I mean, they've played... Spectacular all season. And only two losses, O'Fallon and Slew High. They're trying to tie up the season series with the Panthers. Nicely on a set to Nesbitt, and it's going to be a kill for Chase, and he gets the Lancers a point back, 8-3. to three. We'll see if we can use that as some, as some momentum. LJ Lopino will check in for the first time. He comes in for Geis, and it's Drew Nicely, the libero for the Lancers. He'll go back to serve. 8-3 ball game. How, how huge was Drew at varsity on Tuesday? That's going to go out, though, as kind of goes counter counter argument to what I was going to talk about, his serv service runs against the Junior Billikens at varsity on Tuesday. He was huge. I don't think the Lancers, I mean, we might we'll definitely play a fifth set without him, but, I mean, possibly lose that game. I mean, he had some huge just service runs, and then he made some big defensive plays. That's out. Lancers going to point back, and it's 9-4. Logan Day will come in for Joey Reich. We'll see if he's going to go back to serve, which he will. Here is Day. Line drive, serve. O'Fallon able to track that one down after the first hit. They hit it back over. Knights League. Day, Elijah, big hit, but it's... Deflected, O'Fallon has it. They're going to throw it left side off the set. What a dig by Drew. He got today. Nesbitt left side over O'Fallon. Here we go again on the left side. Drew, did he touch it? He did not as it goes out, and that's the Lancer point. That was close. It was out, and they're going to say Knightsley did not touch it at all, and the Lancers get a huge point. First time they've scored two straight here, and it's 9-5. See if we could get a run going. And O'Fallon was up, what are they, up 6-1, to 5-1. to one. Lance was starting to peel back just a bit here. Need a, another point or two here on this service run by Day. Gets it right to LeBro in the middle. Tip over is blocked. Go back on the Lancer's side. Day, set, left side. Nesbitt, quick, nice little easy soft hit in the middle. There is Knightsling. Lopina, set, right side. Knightsling, big spike, and it goes into that off the dig. And they keep it alive as they played it off. Oh, man, what a play by the Panthers. Nesbitt again off the touch for a kill. Lancers make it 9-7. 9-6, sorry, 9-6 in a three-point game. We're only 15 points into this JV game, but you can just tell that we got a good day of volleyball in store. JV is already living up to its potential and then some, and it's only the first 15 points. Day, another serve right in the middle. Lopero pass, set, left side hard. Spike dig by Drew. He's all over the place. Enriquez, Lopina, free ball over. Here comes O'Fallon, set, middle in the middle. Day is there. Knightsling, pass, right side to his brother Hayden. He hits it over on the left line. Lopero pass, middle, set, left side, blocked. Lancer point, 9 7. Beville East is loving it. 9 7. It's a two point game. And the Lancers starting to just peel it back. I mean, we talked about how huge one or two more would be, and you got that one or two more. Let's see if we, Day can continue in here from that service line. Next one for Day is over. O'Fallon in the middle, set, throw it left side. There is Knightsling running for it. Day, right side, Hayden. 
over, going backwards. They got to play it off the ceiling. Here comes a free ball by the Panthers. That one's going back left corner. Enriquez, Day, back to Augie. He sends it over. O'Fallon will throw it left side. That ball's over. Nesbitt, Day, back to Chase. Libero did, going backwards. O'Fallon, free ball coming again. 9-7 game in set one. Enriquez, Day, Elijah had it blocked. O'Fallon point, 10-7. We go back and forth, O'Fallon wins that point and a hard fought one for sure. Even with Beverly's not getting that point, I mean, still looked good. They're, I mean, they're right here now after a slow start down 6-1. You've cut it to three and you're playing that close with O'Fallon on that last point, you gotta feel pretty good. 10-7, they're play, served by the Panthers. Nesbitt, Day, Lopina. Gets it over, diving play by Libero. Tip over, and Hayden couldn't make a play as he was on the ground trying to dive for it. And 11-7, O'Fallon has responded with two straight. Another serve coming for the Panthers. This one is Nesbo on the left line. Day, back to Chase! Hard spike dig near the net. Tip over going backwards and land on the Lancer side. And Hayden's going to discuss with the ref. 12 7, and O'Fallon is now responded with three straight. Going to be a battle all night between these two. Next serve is over. Knightsling, Day, Lopina as it gets blocked going backwards. Knightsling. Day will sit over the center, Dup going back left corner. O'Fallon scrambles, they're able to get there. Hit over from the back row. Lopina, Day, Knightsley, tip over is blocked. He'll try it again, this time it's over. O'Fallon again, set, left side. Knightsley, Day, right side, Nesbitt. That one's a little bit too strong and it's out. 13-7. O'Fallon back by six. That's their largest lead, it was five. They've scored four straight now, and now gotta get some points here. Set, left side, Lopita! There you go, Elijah! He'll get a kill in our spots, Lancer point 13-8. Mario Randall will check in, he'll go back to serve, he comes in for Chase Nesbitt and a sophomore for sophomore. Substitution. Served by Randall is a soft one right in the middle. O'Fallon, hard spike, nice dig by Drew. Gets it to Logan, Augie will send it over in the left line. Pass, tip over the middle, dive in play. Latches are there, Day will just send it over back left quarter again. O'Fallon able to get there. They'll set left side. Hard spike, it's in. Point O'Fallon, and it's 14-8. Lancers have not led yet in this game, and since the get-go was 6-1, close as they got it, was 9-7. Two-point game, and O'Fallon since then has went on a 5-1 run. Scored four straight. Lancers got a point. O'Fallon's got a point back. That serve is over. Near the east bench, Enriquez is there. Drew Knightsling, free ball, right in the middle. O'Fallon set over. Day off his hand into the crowd. Point O'Fallon, and it's 15-8. Almost doubled East his points here. These two teams met in the Bevel East JV tournament a few weeks ago. O'Fallon took down the Lancers to give them their only loss at the time. That was their only loss before Tuesday. O'Fallon would end up winning that JV tournament. That one is over. Knightsling, Day sends it over in the middle. Dive and play. That ball's kept alive. O'Fallon into the net. Play it off the net. Ain't going to get over. Lancer point. 15 9. 30 guys back in. Drew Knightsling out. No Lovero for the Lancers. Elijah Lopito will serve for his first time. We need to run just like Day had. See if Lopito can assist us with that. That one is on the left line as it got over. They're gonna set it in the middle. Hard spike, did it go touch anybody? It did not. Lancer point, and it's 15-10. Twice now, it's been close. On a play like that, 
15-10, a little penis serve, too strong and out. 16-10, O'Fallon back by six, Lopito out, and it'll be the Lopero Nightsling, Drew Nightsling coming back in. Serve by O'Fallon's over, Randall, Day, left side, no one there to play it off the pass from Day. And we got a 17-10 uh, game, O'Fallon by a seven, their largest lead. Lancers need a run here, and they need, a, I mean, it's not like you need all seven at once, that would be obviously the goal, that's what he would like, but if we can just pop off five or six, close, if not three or four, I think three or four is a goal that's, I mean, get, get three or four, and then let's say, and you give O'Fallon a point, they get a point back, he scored three or four straight again, I mean, you're looking at a tie game, and that ball's into the net, but it's blocked on the Lancer side, and O'Fallon, has opened up an eight point lead, it's 18-10. Their largest of the afternoon, it continues to grow. It was at six, now seven, now eight, till they're trying to make it to nine. Dive and play by Randall. Day, left side, Enriquez, send it over. O'Fallon set, left side, blocked, going backwards, Lancer point. 18-11. Joey Reich will come in for Day, and Hayden Knightsling who started off the game serving for Bubba East. He will serve it now for the second time. We've made a full service rotation. That serve is over. Set right side blocked. Out of outs though off of East. Post one on the right line, 19-11. to 11. It's an eight point game. Serve by Fallon. Randall going backwards. It's Knightsling. Left side, Reich. Blocked. Plays it off the net is Geis. Knightsling will sit it over. O'Fallon again. Right side, good for a point and a kill. 20 to 11. O'Fallon by nine. Just haven't been able to keep up with the Panthers to start this one. I need to find a way to. Recover here, there's still time in this set. Nice hit over by the Lancers, but O'Fallon will sit it back, it's blocked. Libero, pass, go left side again, they'll try it. Off the touch, it's Randall, nicely. Enriquez had it blocked, they'll try it again. Left side once more, Randall is there. Knightsling, pass, Reich had it blocked. Randall's there, gets it to Hayden, and Enriquez will descend over a roll shot. O'Fallon will try it again. This time it's the right side and it's in in the back left corner for a kill. And O'Fallon has a 10 point lead. Bobby will take their first time out. Getting late here at set one for JV. O'Fallon starting to run away. They lead by 10, it's the largest lead. It continues to grow. This is Lancer Volleyball. We'll be back after this here on the Bobby's Broadcast Network. Soon stock with the late set one here in JV on a Thursday afternoon. O'Fallon leading late in set one. It's 21 to 11, a 10 point lead, their largest. That was at six a few minutes ago, and Reich will send it over after the East timeout, and they throw it right back at him, and it's a kill for the Panthers at a point, and it's 22 to 11. They've doubled the Lancers points here late in set one. It's not the start you envisioned, and the Lancers were Made it a 9-7 game. They were down by five to open things up. Six to one, got it to 9-7, down by two. And then since then, a 13-4 run for the Panthers. Left side, right, trying to get this one going. It's blocked off the net. Geis is there. Drew Dyson will send it over the back left corner. O'Fallon, 
will play it right side. Nicely diving play, can't make a play. And it's 23 to 11. O'Fallon needs two more. See if the Lancers can just try and get a little momentum here before the end of the set. It's going to be tough to rattle off a 13 and 1 run, but it is possible. And it will take one there. So now we need a 12 run run as that was blocked on the O'Fallon side. And Chase Desby will come in for Mario Randall with Augie Enriquez to serve. Now you need seven or eight here straight. Try to cut this in half. That would be the first thing you want to do. And then score seven or eight straight after that if O'Fallon gets a point. Served by the Panther by Enriquez to the Panthers is out. And O'Fallon has reached set point in set one, 24-12. They'll look to end this one here by double digits is the margin. A rough start, a rough start. Panthers will need some momentum in set two and hope for a quick start, not be down six to one, open things up. Nesbitt off the block, and they're gonna call it. O'Fallon will take the first set, 20 Five to 12, Lancers need a rebound as we go to set two coming up in a minute. Lancer Volleyball here on the Bevel East Broadcast Network, set two to follow shortly. Lancers have work to do in this second set. JV falling in the first one by a score of 25 to 12. Open up down 6-1, made it 9-7. But O'Fallon capped off the first set with a 16 and five run and they take the first set. They won the first matchup between these two in the Bubble East JV tournament a few weeks ago. Lancers 12 and two. They're only two losses to Slough High and O'Fallon. And they look to 
of who in number three, but they got to get to a third set first before we start that conversation. Serious so talk with the weekend right here for set two. Out there to start for here for Bubble East. Hayden Eitzling will be having the opening serve. He's out there with Augie Enriquez, Brody Geist, Joey Reich. Drew Knightsling libero and Mario Randall. Here comes O'Fallon after the first serve. The Lancers going right to left is over. O'Fallon sends it back. Reich on the right side. Lancers are going to get called for a double touch, and it's 1-0 in favor of the Panthers. We need a quicker start. We need to stay in this. O'Fallon, I mean, they, I mean, we got it to two, but we just, as that's going to be in, oh, man. Back right corner, it's an ace on the right line, and it's 2 nothing. But we got it. stay with these guys. We got it to 9-7, and after that, it felt like after we gave up a point, 10-7, after that great service run by Logan Day, there's going to be another ace. Back-to-back -back aces for O'Fallon, and it's 3 nothing. We got to play a little, we got to stay with them here. Mario Randall out after that. Chase Nesbitt's in. We'll see if the Lancers can find some points here. That is since over O'Fallon. Right side. Tip over. Blocked. Landed on the O'Fallon side. Lancer point. And it's 3-1. to one. Bebel East is on the board in this second set. And Augie Enriquez, we need him to put down an ace or something here. We, need, we, need, we, we talk about plays that are momentum sparks, but plays that are going to, you know, get you a little momentum a little spark, a little fire, as we need one of those here. Left side, Nesbitt, tip over near the right line. O'Fallon there in the middle. Throw it right side. That's going to be a Lancer point on a violation by O'Fallon, and it's going to be 3-2. to two. The Lancers can tie it early here in this second set. Another serve coming for Enriquez, the freshman. Line drive serve got over. Throw it right side. That one's too strong, and it's out. No touch. We are tied at three. The Lancers have scored three straight after O'Fallon opened up went three straight of their own. A 3-3 game. Another one coming for Enriquez. We need an ace here. And call that a reverse jinx. Four to three, and O'Fallon has taken the lead back. Or served by the Panthers. Nesbitt, ninth lane, back to Nesbitt. He hits it over. Lapero in the middle, set, go right side, block, land on the Lancer side. And the Panthers make it 5-3. to three. It's a two-point game. Five to three. This one is over. Ninth lane to his brother Hayden. Guys, perfect set. And Brody finished it, 5-4. He'll come out, Elijah Lopino in. Drew Knightsley in the libero for the Lancers will serve for the first time here in the second set. One point game, serve is over. O'Fallon, right side, hard one. There is Enriquez near the net. Hayden's there, he throws it back, gets it to Drew, and he'll hit it over. O'Fallon in the middle, out! Tie game at five once again. Five, five. And that serve is over. O'Fallon hits it over. Nightsling couldn't dig it out. As this dig went into the crowd, so O'Fallon, or I guess you could say he's bench, makes it six to five. And they take the lead back. Like this start though in the second set, playing close. That's gonna be a service there. We're tied up at six. Logan Day will come in for Joey Reich, and let's see if Day can lead a service run like he did early at set one. That got the Lancers to a 9-7 game. Got it within two. We need a lead here. Lancers are not led yet today. Day. Gets it over to line drive, right in the middle of Fallon. Lopina tip over. Was it in? It was! And the Lancers have their first lead of the day. It's 7-6. Thanks to Elijah Lopino. Just 
pound that right line, easy tip over, and a great play by Elijah, and it's 7-6, Battle East by one. Dang, we need another one. Come on, Logan. Gets it over, Lopero in the middle. They got a scramble going backwards. Roll shot, left side. It's over off of Nesbitt, who couldn't really handle it. Tie game. Looked like he kind of wasn't ready for that, and that kind of led to him not being able to make a play on that. That you know, he, that's a play that he usually will make. 7-7. Seven, seven. Another one coming for O'Fallon. Left-handed serve. Out, Lanters take the lead back via the service error. And it's 8-7. Espino will go back to Sir. We got to see if Chase can lead her on. Let's see if we can get three straight. As it serve is over. O'Fallon in the middle. Set her dump. Ninesling dive in play. Lopina followed up today in the middle. Lopero pass set. Left side blocked on the O'Fallon side. Lancers making a two point game and it's 9 7. Their largest lead of the afternoon. Let's see if they can do the same thing O'Fallon did with their largest lead at set one. It kept growing. O'Fallon in the middle. Set left side hard one. And there's no one there for Pavelis. 9-8. They were going to respond. It was coming. Mario Randall will come back in. Chase Nesbitt making some plays. He'll come out. O'Fallon is contained on this serve. It's a one-point game. Took the first set 25-12. Powered by a 16-5 run. That serve is out. Back-to-back -back service errors by the Panthers. Make it a two-point lead for East. Knights lean out. Geis is in. And Lopina to serve. No Lopero for the Lancers. Lache service over. Right side O'Fallon. Lopina's there off the block. Day. Left side, Enriquez, hard swing by Aki! Lancers by three and it's 11-8. I need Augie to put some down. He did that early in set one. He was quiet for the rest of the set. He has now made it a three-point lead. Another one over, O'Fallon. Left side, it's blocked, but out. 11-9. Opina will come out, Drew Neinslin in. Two point game, another serve for the Panthers. Neitzling, pass to his brother Hayden, left side, Augie, got it, Enriquez, hello, his second. 12-9, second kill of the set, Day is out, Reich is in, and we've completed a full rotation of the second set with Hayden Neitzling, the sophomore servant. This one's in the middle, O'Fallon on the right side will set it left, tip over the middle, Neitzling backwards, Drew, Augie had it blocked, but out. 13-9, and the Lancers are by, up by four. Fallon just keeps hitting it out. Had a couple service there, and that one on the block was out. Ken Camp hits it over. O'Fallon, oh, and they're going to say, got it, 13-10. Lancers wanted a lift. Oh, get it, 13-10. Fallon trying to come back. They were played really well after the Lancers had a big run that got it to two. They responded well. That's a team. That's what a good team does. That one is going to be over. I had to play around the antenna at an awkward angle. Neitzling, Reich over. Oh, Fallon in the middle. Pass, right side. Dive and play by Mario. He's got to hit it. Right side, Augie, over. Oh, Fallon keeps it alive and gets it over on the third touch. Enriquez, Hayden. Over, Guy Snow into the net. And it's 13-11, and O'Fallon has cut it from four to two. They've cut it in half. I, I mean, I'll, I know it's still about midway through here in the set, but you do not want to lose this lead. You want to stay with the lead here. 
even if it's a one point lead after all of this is said and done. O'Fallon, left side, blocked on the Lancer side and it's a one point game. O'Fallon will look to tie. 13-12, you cannot let the Panthers make it 14-13 and take a lead in two points. That'd be a 5-0 run and you need momentum. Into the net, that won't happen. Lancer's back by two, Chase Nesbitt's gonna come in. Mario Randall out and it will be Evan Strini coming in. He'll come in for Enriquez and Strini comes in for the first time. He'll make his first serve. He was out Tuesday battling a sickness. Glad to see him back. He's he's looked good. He's a junior and that is playing pretty well. I got to give him props, man. He's been good and I chased him there. Dang it. Into the net. 14-13. But I mean, I, he has played great. Enriquez will come back in for Strini. Turning one of the only two juniors on this JV roster. Both him and Drew Neinsling are also on that varsity roster. Right side, right had it blocked. We're tied up at 14 as they were ready on that right, right side and put the heads up, got the block. We're tied. Fourteen, fourteen. Served by O'Fallon is a short one. Nesbit, Neinsling back to chase. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Lancer's back on top. Geis is out. Lopina's in. 15-14. Ninesling will have your serve. Gotta stay on top here. You have to stay in front. Cannot let, you cannot let O'Fallon take the lead. Set. Right side. Blocked. Out. Oh, yeah, it's going to stay off O'Fallon. Lancers by two, they'll get the point. Sixteen fourteen. Another serve by Drew. In the middle, Lapero to Lapero. Left side. It's off the block and it will go way out. Off the touch for a kill, and O'Fallon is back with it one. 16-15. Man, this JV game has been, uh, it's gotten good. It was good at the open things up, and now we're in the second set. It's been even better, and only a precursor to what varsity could be coming up. Lopina in the middle. O'Fallon will throw it right side. Nice stick by Hayden. will hit off the scoreboard, and we are tied up at 16. It's hard to control that ball when it hits your hands. It is hard to control it. Once it hits off, it's tough to make it go where you want it to go. Our serve, Hayden running for it. Free ball coming from Drew. This one's over, O'Fallon. Middle set, right side, and that's in the net. Yeah, because they touched the net. So the Lancers will get the point, and they take the lead back, and it, no, wait. Are they giving it to O'Fallon? Are we saying replay? Looks like we're gonna replay it. All right, 16-16 still. They originally said it was East Point, but they were to replay it. So we're still tied up at 16. Knights like Lopina, he'll get it back for the boys. Elijah puts one down, there we go. 17-16, Logan Day coming in for Reich, and let's see if they could just lead a service run like he did in set one. That's what we need, just start rattling four off here. Maybe three would be huge, Maybe I mean even two. I mean, you just need a little separation again. O'Fallon still hasn't taken the lead yet in a while. That one is going to be in. And we're tied up at 17. Another serve for O'Fallon. Left-handed serve into the net. O'Fallon still has not taken the lead. 18-17, once the Lancers got it, it stayed with them, either that or it's been tied. Chase Nesbitt back to serve. Chase, too strong and out. 18-18. Randall will come back in, he'll come in for Nesbitt. A lot better second set here by Bevelis. They have looked a lot better. 
And that first set was, I mean, just what not what we, we've seen in the JV games we've been able to do. Just not the JV team. But here we are now playing a lot better and up to our potential. Enriquez hits it over. O'Fallon in the middle to sit over a free ball. Randall, we got to take advantage of that free ball. Nicely, Lopina tip over, blocked, and they went over for a Lancer point. And it's 19-18 in Bevel East. It's back on top, and Elijah Lopina will go back to serve for the Lancers. No little barrel with Knightsland coming out, and Geis is in. Right, 2-18. Serve by Lopino is a line drive. O'Fallon blocked, and with Lopino for the Lancers, will throw it left side. That one is going to be too strong, an out by Enriquez. And we are tied up at 19. Let's keep going. Back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth. We shall go. O'Fallon diving play to Eitzlin. It's not going to be followed up. It's an ace. And O'Fallon, who's had service errors, they get an ace. They take the lead for the first time in quite a while. It's 20 to 19. Now the Lancers are going to need to find a way to pop off two straight at least. They're going to need three straight right now to win. That's it in that. Another service there by O'Fallon. They've had a lot of those in the set, too. I mean, they just, it's more than they had in set one. Logan good day out. Joey Reich in. Well, Peter was also out. Drew Neitzlin in. So Lancers have a little barrel back out there. Hayden Neitzlin to serve. Third time serving in the set. Got over, O'Fallon, left side, hard swing, it's in. And O'Fallon has taken the lead back, it's 21-20. One point game. Our surf file foul. We got a referee timeout with the whistle blow to redo it here. Are we going to get a Lancer? Are they going to give a point for that? Because they didn't wait. Yeah, Lancer's going to get a point out of it. Yes. Take advantage of the miscue. And it's 21 21. They didn't serve it when the refs were ready, I guess. And. Blew the whistle, Lancers have a tie ball game, but it's a serve for Augie Enriquez. Mario Randall out, Chase Desmond in. Take advantage of the miscue. Take advantage of the air. Let's go. Enriquez, hard one. That's it. That's it for Augie. Lancers take the lead back on an ace. 22-21. Big one there on that right line. Another one for Enriquez. It's coming. Augie, that's it, that's it, come on, Blue, a ref, ah. Just out, we got no line judges here in JV, so that does make things a little tougher, and you're playing two-man ref crew. That's tough, I, you know, call me a little biased, it was close, it was close, and they got a better call down there anyway, 22-22, they'll give it to O'Fallon, tie game, just a little bit out. It's in and out, don't matter! Lancers take the lead, back, 23-22, Lopita's in. Geis is out. Drew Neitzler to serve. Come on, we need two more. It's over, Lopera to Lopera in the middle, hit over. Nice play by Augie, hated. Nesbitt whistles, it's gonna go on Neitzling. Double touch, tied up at 23. We just can't score two straight. And now you put O'Fallon in a spot, they can, this is going to be tough. 23-23, they can rattle a point off here and be in the advantage. Serve, Enriquez. Hated, Lopina over, O'Fallon, throw it left side. Off the block, Lancers can't follow it up, and we've hit game point, 24-23. And the Lancers will take a timeout. As Coach Paget would say, can we get the timeout doctor to make a part on this upcoming serve. 24-23, O'Fallon leads. We have that serve for you after a timeout. This is Lancer Volleyball on the Bell East Broadcast Network.
Well, here we go. O'Fallon, game point. They will look to win this game. They took the first set, 25-12. Beverly East has fought, fought, and fought. And it goes down to the serve, 24. 23 O'Fallon, over, Nesbitt. Hated, back to chase. Hit the top net, got over the line drive. O'Fallon, set, right side. It's in, and O'Fallon will set the tone here at Bevel East. JV wins it to a set shutout, a hard fought second set by the boys, but just couldn't pull it out in the end. They lost the first one, 25-12. They will lose the second, 25-12. 23. Well, if that wasn't entertainment for I don't know what we'll do. Varsity coming up. Maybe on the top that it will be tough, but these two schools, it has been tough back and forth games, very competitive games over the years. Bevel East has lost nine straight to O'Fallon coming in to tonight. The last win was on April 29, 2021 in a two-set win for the Lancers. 25-20. 25-9, they will lose nine straight after that. And now, the Lancers look for a first win. It's talked to a few of the boys, that sexual semifinal loss is still fresh in their minds. Into their season on a Saturday afternoon at Belva West. I know it's only the regular season, but this is the win, a win the boys would like to have to keep rolling with momentum after a four set win at SLU High. O'Fallon comes with a record of 12-2-2, their 4-0 in conference play. Bevel East is 18-2, 2-0 in conference play. Varsity's coming up in about 20 minutes or so. We have our warm-ups following here. We'll be back for our national anthem and started lineups. This is Lancer Volleyball on the Bevel East Broadcast Network.
driving the success of our children's education and their lives. They are the ones who inspire and guide our kids to become future leaders, innovators, and problem solvers. Please join us tonight as we honor our amazing educators in the Middle East who drive our future leaders of tomorrow. Joe Byrne. Katie Horner. Danielle Littak. Christina Moran. Rebecca White. Katie Young.
Alicia Felton. We thank both of you for your dedication and your hard work you put in over all these years at Bell East. Your work is greatly appreciated by everybody in Bell East Nation. A big thank you to Ms. McGarry and Mrs. Evan. And how about a nice round of applause for all of our Bell East teachers honored here tonight. Thank you. 
stage is set. Here we go, folks. This is a huge one. The Panthers of O'Fallon and your Lancers of Beverly. Did a Southwestern Conference game. The Panthers come in a record of 12, 2 and 2. 4-0 in conference play. Your Lancers are 18-2, 2-0 in conference play. Steven Stockley, let's review those started laps for it, provided by our great PA, Keith Padgett. We'll start off with the visitors and the Panthers of O'Fallon. Starts off with a sophomore number one, Elijah Zambrisier, a number nine, a junior middle, Max Westfall, number 10, a senior, Jaden Barragel. Number 11, a senior middle, Brett Meek. Number 12, a junior setter, Ian Shirley. You gotta watch out for this guy. Number 23, a senior, Nathan Fink. And the libero's pretty good as well. He was a freshman, started in the sexual semifinal game last year against the Lancers. Number six, a sophomore libero, Neam Patel. Over for the Lancers, it's the same starting lineup on Tuesday at Slough High. Number two, a senior, Caleb Day. Number six, a senior, Sebastian Schultz. Number nine, August Warner, a senior, draws another start. The setter is the junior, Keegan Rose, number 10. On the other two are the Garrett, the Byers brothers, sorry, Jack and Garrett with Damian Watson out. Garrett Byers draws a second consecutive start. Jack Byers, number 24, a junior, and Garrett, a senior, number 26. Your libero is number seven, Camden DeJernay, a senior. Well, Beville East has lost nine straight games against O'Fallon, and tonight has the playoff atmosphere. It's not the playoffs, and the... The, the writing's on the wall that these two teams will meet up again in the playoffs. They've done it the last three years. Beverly has lost all three. They've lost nine straight, in fact, coming into tonight. The Lancers are 11 and 36 against the Panthers in program history. They won the first meeting between these two schools, but it hasn't been going well over the last two years. Lancers will try and show off how good they've been in these 20 games. They've played some tough teams and they've stayed with them. They've battled through adversity and battled, and will try to battle again against another tough foe in the Metro East in their Southwestern Conference, the Panthers of O'Fallon. Cam Day today will check in for Caleb Day, and we're getting ready to begin. The Lancers will receive first. O'Fallon will have the open and serve. This O'Fallon team last year knocked off the Lancers, as I mentioned, in the sectional semifinal, went on to get fourth place at state. They became the first Metro East team to make state the year before and became the first Metro East team to win a game at state. They finished in fourth place. Their open and serve is in, and O'Fallon takes a 1-0 lead on the back line ace off the hands of Ian Shirley. 1-0 O'Fallon, and this is how this one begins on a Thursday evening. We're glad to have you along watching some Lancer volleyball. What a game in store. Hope you have as much fun watch as I am bringing it to you here. That one's over, August Warner, Keegan Rose, Jack Byers hits it over, it's out, 2-0 to O'Fallon. This is how this one begins. I think the key tonight for Bubble East is not what the, the first two points to start had. You have a packed gym, you have numerous Bubble East fans, that one gets over, you want to set the tone, get your crowd loud, and that is out, Lancers want a touch, won't get it, 3-0 O'Fallon. You want to be able to quiet O'Fallon, that's the goal, they're a good team. They're going to get loud when they make their plays. They're a team that's going to stay in ball games. They ride off momentum. And when their crowd gets loud, they're going to feed off of that. You have to quiet them in your home gym. Lancers are on the board, and that goes in and that via the service error, and it's 3-1. to one. Tyce Watson will come in in a minute. He was thought he was going to come in, and Coach says, oh, well, give, me, give me one more minute here. We'll get you back in. Hold on. For the Lancers, Jack Byers will have the opening serve for Bevel East. Come on, Jack. We need a little jack attack. It's over. O'Fallon in the middle. Set. Throw it right side. Tip over. Deidre Day can't get there. It landed right in the middle of August and Cam. 4-1. to O'Fallon by three. Nathan Fink will serve. And I, this guy was insane last year. I, and I go back to that sexual semifinal game and you think of that game and you think of guys from that game, Nathan Fink is one of the names that stands out. Him and Sheehan who was a senior last year, those two were the big in that sexual semifinal. Warner, tip over, here comes O'Fallon, they'll respond back, set, throw it from the back row, blocked, O'Fallon going backwards, they're going to get to it though. Here comes a roll shot, it's over. Byers, Rose, set, August, had it blocked, out off O'Fallon, let's report 4-2. Caleb Day is in, Sebastian Schultz out, and Cam DeJernay, who's usually the last player to serve, will serve second. Goes Nesbitt, Nesbitt switching it up. First serve by DeJernay, the libero for the Lancers is over. Left side, O'Fallon, blocked! Hello, Keegan! 
bank. Four to three, Keegan Rose put the hands up on a block. Keegan was huge Tuesday against Slew High. I mean, he had did a great job because Slew High, as the game went on, started playing August. They were ready for August on the on the side and put the hands up, blocked it well. Every time they were, went to August, Slew High was ready. That's out, this game's tied at four. They were ready, and Keegan Rose had to get the ball to his other guys, guys in the middle like Day and Schultz, but Jack Byers as well, and it was huge how he did it. He used everybody, and that was a key factor in the fourth set win against the Junior Bills. Bavelis, the first Illinois team to knock off Slew High in their own gym, and they now take a lane, five to four, thanks to August Warner. Lancers have scored four straight, and they have their first lead of the evening. It's five, four, Danger Day still serving. We need more energy, we need more momentum. Danger Day in the middle of the libero, go counter to counter. Counterpart, Rose, August, yes, August, yes! 6-4, Lancers by two, and it's five straight. If you could get August throwing it down like that, I mean, keep, uh, they're gonna obviously start looking for August, and it's up to Rose to get his other guys involved, but play August right now while you can. That's into the net, so they'll end the Lancer run, but a huge run from Danger Day at the service line, and it's 6-5. Patel, the Lopero fro found to go back to serve. This guy is pretty good as well. He was a freshman last year. Nope, never mind, he will not serve. So that will end my talking point about him. But I, if he come, I mean, obviously we'll get him talking about him later on, but he is incredible. Jack Henhausen, a sophomore, will serve this one. August, Rose, back to August. Hello, August, and he went over. Dang it, 6-6. Six, six. And August is gonna go over to the ref. I mean, it was way over. 6-6 six, six ball game. And Coach Blomberg, uh-oh, has just went over to the ref. And we and the refs are now gonna discuss. I don't like this. I don't like this what we're about to have. The refs are over to talk. Oh, well, we are under a tort. We are under a tornado, tornado warning, so we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. We are under a tornado warning. The game is suspended at 6-6. I'm going to put it up. We're going to be out here, and we'll be back once we're allowed back in. 6-6, six six, we're under a tornado warning. This game has been delayed. 6-6, six, six, set, set one. We'll be
Is that the first question? Are you ready? No. And that is incorrect. You are ready. The answer is no. <laughs> the Chick Fil A Classic Trivia Cup Invitational. It's our third place game between Coach Brockman and Coach Zergel. They've had two hard fought semifinal rounds. You don't games. have to say third place like that. A bit of a letdown the way you just said it. Like There's that. no question. I mean, uh, the team and I are disappointed to be in the third place game, but it's about motivation now. It's kind of like a lot of the college bowl games, like who's right. motivated, you know? So That's we'll right. see. Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll see how the uh, litigation ends up on that one. <laughs> uh, but uh, but as of right now, it is it is officially a loss in my department. But, uh, you know, <laughs> the litigation. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens, you know. Wigs pageants in the championship. Uh, who are you two rooting for in that game? Uh, uh, I'm rooting for the power to go out. <laughs> and the game have to be canceled, <laughs> and no one wins. Just to be clear. So, okay. Yep. Rock, but what about you? Uh, I mean, that's a pretty good scenario, right? No doubt. There. No it, doubt. Barring that setback, though, it's got to be Paget because I mean, yeah. if 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 anybody's going to win this, it's got to be the person who yeah. beat me, right? Yeah. Like I don't want to be the well, guy who. No, I. I get it. Weasley little wigs just winning this and just like, oh, sorry, guys, I won. I guess, uh-huh. I like to have to deal with that. You guys, and I like the same two questions, the U.S. history question. Yeah, that bothered me. And the chat, GPT, top Oh, that drove players. me crazy. Oh, that drove you crazy too? Oh, I'm well, so I was furious. Let's, let's, let's just be real here, okay? Uh, I honestly, I thought the categories were, were great. I loved it. I'm not, I was, I'm not going to go was, that far, Steve. I was, I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> it was – Debatable on who belonged in the top ten of both of those lists, but mm-hmm. I mean, you didn't. Right. You, Steven Stock, are doing a great sure. job. Of I asked these. a preschool so. class who the best players in the world are, and this is what they came up with. <laughs> All right, and here we go. I asked Chat GPT <laughs> to name oh, the, the ten greatest sports athletes of all time. <laughs> Any name them. <laughs> You're right. up first, Coach okay. Virgil. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Is the number one answer. Let's go. So already up ten nothing. All right, I'll go with uh, Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth is the number six answer. Tom Brady. Tom Brady is the number ten answer. Get it on there. There we go. Uh, Muhammad Ali. That's a good one. Number two answer. You guys are four for four. I'm liking it. I do like this category, actually. It's going to be very debatable. Um, but. This isn't. I'm, I'm just to be. This isn't just American, correct? Um. Seems like it's American. I would say it's American. Okay. Okay. I think these are all Americans. Gretzky. Would, I'll go Gretzky. That's fine. Yeah, well, interesting. Like... Chat GPT really doing a good job. <laughs> so yeah. the great one is not one of the great ones. Yeah, I guess ones, hockey's right? not a real sport. That's fine. That's whatever. This whole trivia wow. has got real flaws, I Steven. mean, this thing is already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go Jim Brown. That's a good guess. Wow. Okay, great. I'll go LeBron James. <laughs> I've got a great guess, and if he's not on there, I might just say that's over. I'm out. I'm just going to drop my headset and just stomp off. <laughs> Let's go with uh, uh, Jim Thorpe. I mean, he should be on the list. I'll go Tiger Woods. Ooh, that's a good one. Wow. They're out. <laughs> wow. I want to start. We went, you guys went four for four, and now we're – I mean, for five. I mean, Steven. Should I even try to guess I Jack Nicholas? I can't wait to see this list. I just am excited about all the solid <laughs> athletes that we have on this list. Let's go with um, let's go with Willie Mays. <laughs> so you guys okay. start four for four now. Oh, Here we go. Six. Can't wait to see I the unveiling on this list. These. What are we doing? Let's reveal it. Number nine is Michael Phelps. Okay. I mean, that's okay. fine. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Number eight is Jackie Joyner Kears. Somebody loves track and field on this list. Oh, you're gonna. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of Olympic sports to say the least. Number seven's Messi. American, international, and <laughs> everywhere. I apologize. Oh my God. Number five is uh. Pele, I was gonna get <laughs> Stephen. 
Do you understand what America means? <laughs> it's time to open up. Hey, he's been to America Everyone before. Everyone at home, this is what we're Lionel doing. Lionel right Messi, here. he plays for Miami. Come on now, American. <laughs> oh, Pele played for the New York Cosmos. Oh, let's get excited. <laughs> <laughs> number four is Usad Bolt. And number three is Serena Williams. I mean, I, Serena, Serena Williams, I totally understand. Huh? Okay, but like. Uh, we can't get Gretzky on the list. Yeah, so, yeah, when I think greatest athletes of all time, I mean, I definitely have to put, you know, Jackie joyner Kersey ahead of Wayne Gretzky. You know, you could go on the street and ask people. And I, I know she's local, but, oh, my God. In the last 10 Bevel East teams to win a regional championship, you must include the head coach. Coach Brockman, you're up first. Uh, so... Uh, 2022 baseball, Ryan Wiggs, head coach. <laughs> that is the number seven answer. So does that mean that there's six Again, it's older, ranked by older recent. teams? Yes, it's ranked by three recent. more recent, recent again. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Boys volleyball, 2000, it would be 23, Joe Nesbitt. Number nine answer. Uh, the 2018 baseball team, Ryan Wiggs, head coach. Does it go back that far? He, that is the number three answer. Nice. nice. So that, that shows you how far it goes back. I can't. So again, I'm going to go 2017 boys basketball, Abel Schroeder. Oh! 2022 boys volleyball, Joe Nesbitt. Good guess. Good guess. All right, is the number six answer. I'll go 2021 boys volleyball. Joe Nesbitt. Great. 2021 softball, Natalie Peters. Number five answer. Go 2022 softball, Natalie Peters. Number eight answers. How about 2017 softball, Natalie Peters? Oh! <laughs> Number two answer. That is superb. Steven, I'm out. You're out? I'm out. There's still a few on there. All right. You're out. I'm out. The 2018 softball, Natalie Peters. Number four, answer. With the 2023 boys soccer team, the head coach, Ron English. I'm going to try it for this. I'm going to try 2017 boys volleyball, Joe Nesbitt. So number 10 was 2023 softball. That's the most recent. Okay. And number one, you got to go – a little more, a few years back, 2015 to 2016, that winter season, girls basketball is the number one answer. The five <laughs> NFL players who've caught the most touchdown passes since 2010. Ooh, this is good. Travis Kelsey. That's a good guess, actually. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Julio Jones. Wow. Julian Edelman. Uh, Antonio Brown. Oh! He is the number four answer. Sorry, I'm thinking. Devontae Adams. Number two answer. Good guess. I don't think I would have guessed that one. I'm going to go with another tight end. I'm going to go with Rob Gronkowski. A good number guess. one answer. Wow. Yeah, good number guess. one. Good guess. I didn't think he'd be number one. Yeah. I'll give you guys a hint. There's one tight end left and one uh, one receiver. Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham. Ooh, good number guess. three answer. I don't love this answer, but I'll go Larry Fitzgerald. I wish he was yeah, on I there. thought about that too. He I wish he kind was. Of in his... Yeah, his you know he goes into the decade before a little too much. I think. Uh, I'm gonna go with Tyreek. What was your guess? My only guess is Wes Welker. No, the actual so number five is Mike Evans. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah. Consistency. Yeah, that's, yeah, good. that's, that's a always, tough one. I, well, look, I researched the best records in football, boys basketball, and girls basketball. So you guys have to name the top ten six one eight schools with the best record in football, boys basketball, and girls basketball combined since the twenty twenty one season. This is by win percentage, Man, all combined. Great question. Um. Football, boys basketball, and girls basketball combined. 
Let's go with East St. Louis. They are the number seven answer. So they're uh, actually tied with the team. So that is uh, going to be worth three points. Edwardsville? They just missed. I think they were number 12. I'll go with O'Fallon. O'Fallon is the number two answer. Wow, I didn't think they And they, they have a crazy. I'll go Bree Central. Bree Central, number one answer. That's good. That's good. I guessed Edwardsville. That wasn't. Mascuda? Mascuda. Number 10 answer. I'm going to go with Modern Day. Modern Day is the number nine answer. Good guess. Man. Would Belleville East be on there? I don't know if they would. Although they did go, we did go 26 and five or whatever last year. Right. For, for boys basketball. But I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Belleville East. They were only eight games above 500. I think it's 84 and 76. Okay. So they Steven, were. Steven, I will go Freeburg. Freeburg. Oh, good, good one. Number five answer. Oh, I know what I should go. Columbia. Mm. Columbia. Mm. It's the number six answer. Mm. Great guess. Proud of you. I still miss, we're still missing a very obvious one. All tough. They're not on there. Oh, there it is. I'm out. So Rockman's playing with two get or two strikes. I can't even think of the school. So let's go with uh, let's go with Civic Memorial. Who is your guess? Nashville. Nashville was the number three answer. Yeah, they had a, a shame. Six eighty one. I should have put. I should have said them. That's stupid. Number four is Mount Vernon with the six eighty. Oh, I would have never got the Mount Vernon yeah. one. I then, wasn't aware. And then tied with East St. Louis for seventh was Collinsville. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I guess football. They've been really good the last football. couple yeah, of years. Yeah, they had helped them. Eight, their record, I think it was yeah. eight wins, nine yeah, wins, Yeah, I guess wins. they're. Yeah, I so. guess that makes sense. I probably should have guessed. But that's uh, that's an interesting list. That's tough. Yeah, I, I thought it was very interesting. Yeah, doing all the data. By so. far, that's your best category so far. The <laughs> other two. Were... Dave, the 2018 college football Oh, get out of here. Rankings. No, Ten. not fair. Oh, it's election day. Not fair. And, and hey, not hey, fair. Hey, I didn't pick them. I didn't not pick them. Not fair. you're up first. Election day. Does that Selection mean? day was in 2018. Early December. Yes, of 2018. Okay. And then the playoffs are okay. in 2019. I'm ready. All right. Alabama. Alabama. Number one answer. This is how Zergel gets back in the game. <laughs> I mean, this is unreal. This is how he gets back in it. Uh, Clemson. All right, number two. Yep, you're right. He's got it. Number two. <laughs> he got it. <clears throat> I just need a second to think. Well, I was eating lunch at Panera on that day, and uh, I was actually going you know, through all my notes. Oklahoma. Number four answer. Ohio State. Number six answer. Notre Dame. Eight, uh, number three is eight points. Ready, Steven? Yep. Georgia. Number five answer. Got four left on there. Penn State. Mm. Oregon. You're out. Wisconsin. Sorry, I'm thinking. I can only imagine what's going through his oh, brain right now. So many he's, he's got teams. He's got records. <laughs> so many things just falling He's got stats. Them. I mean, at all. Texas. Yeah. Number 10 oh, was there. Florida. Mm. Number 9 was Washington. Oh, I was on Washington. Number 8 is UCF. And number 7 was Michigan. I was going to say Michigan or Florida. That was my next guesses if I had guesses. So Uh, Can you name the six high schools Bevel East has the best record against? So this is including girls, boys volleyball, boys and girls soccer. I don't know why I put boys and girls volleyball twice. That should be boys and girls basketball. Okay. Football and what am I and baseball Je and softball. I have I'm all over the place on the question. But just those sports though. Yes. Okay. So again, so volleyball, boys and girls, boys and girls soccer, football, boys and girls basketball, and then baseball, softball. Okay. All the sports together. What's our best record? Against the school. Like, all sports. Oh, sports. you're not so, saying, like, baseball. Not no, just no, baseball. No, 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 so, no, no, all no, the no. sports, all the sports combined. It's more generic. Yeah. I'm going to say Granite City. Number three answer. 
I'll go Alton. Uh, Altoff. Games in volleyball and one game in Metro football. East Lutheran. There you go. Four and zero. They barely got it. They barely got on there. Four and zero. That's fantastic. Yeah! That's a great guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh man Zergel, how, how did you come back in trivia Metro <laughs> East Lutheran 4-0 oh. uh, yep Father McGivney oh I was gonna stick just on the train just trying to stay in it I'll go Collinsville oh two strikes yeah one more Mascuda yes yes you're good that was wrong. <laughs> yeah, Steven, I know. Just oh. give, you could give me the answer, please. This is... Uh... Number, number five was Belva West. Really? Yeah. Oh. Number one was Jabot. Because they own him in baseball pretty good. City, not the team. Sure, sure. They're up first. New Orleans. That was going to be my guess. Number two answer <clears throat> with ten Super Bowls hosted. I'm going to go Phoenix or Tempe. Whichever one the Cardinals are at. Really? Miami. Number one answer. They've hosted more? I thought they They've didn't hosted host 11. because they were an outdoor venue. I guess that didn't matter in the 60s and yeah, 70s. Yeah. So. Um, Atlanta. Really? Los Angeles. Number three answer. Detroit. You're out. No strikes on the board for Zergel, so. Tampa. Number four answer. How oh, you're thinking, I'm going to eat. Yeah, go ahead. We you have guys a, don't mind. I got a have short halftime half time snack. Um, I'll say I, I don't like this answer, though. A Houston. One strike. San Diego? I'll go San Diego. Why are you helping him? That's too strong. Oh, I thought he was dumb. Do you, you think you know? I think I do. Mm. But I'm not going to say it out loud. San Francisco? I was going to say New York City. So the answer number five, you actually said if he had the city wrong, it's Glendale. But you said Phoenix. So. I feel like that's a technicality, Stephen. Well, I did say at the start of the <sighs> question, I did say you had to get the city, not the team. City. My lawyers were here about this one again. I think Two it, games under dispute now. It's back the chat GPT for this oh. next question. I mean, I really come out firing on these and then just kind of peter out. Oh. Ask chat GPT. <laughs> to name me a list of the 10 greatest combined Chiefs and Eagles players. Wait, wait, wait. Combined? Combined. Like, not that they played for both teams. Like, you... Combined, like Eagles' greatest player, Chiefs' okay. greatest player on the I same list. Gotcha. So, Coach Brockman, you're up first on this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. The 10 oh, wow. greatest. So, that, I think there's a good there's a good. Uh, I mean, good Patrick goes. Mahomes has got to be on the list. If it's chat, chat GPT, they it's are, probably number one. They're the number 10 answer. Or Mahomes is the number ten answer. So one of the things that I, I want I want to explain to the uh, people at home as they watch this the thousands. I'm going and I want to explain myself before you buzz me. Chuck Becknerick is Mr. Eagle. If he's not on this list, Chat GPT. I mean, we might as well just blow it up. <laughs> For the lead, Coach Zergel has the lead, and okay. it's the number three answer. Yep. Yep. Right, uh, Lenny Dawson. Oh, great pick. Number seven answer. This is interesting. I, I don't know if Chat GPT was it. I'll say Reggie White, but that's a good pick. Yeah, that might be number one actually. He is the number one yeah. answer. Uh, I was, I'll Huge. stay with the defensive line and go with Derek Thomas. Great. Number two answer. Great pick. Great pick. That was going to be my Ron guess. Jaworski. Jaws. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Morons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas is not an eagle, by the way. Another technicality. That's what it said on, on the list on the <laughs> website. Well, I, I put the prop in. Derek there. Thomas is probably one of the Chiefs' greatest players of all time, and Chat GPT doesn't even know what team he's on. Bill Shields, offensive guard. 
that's too good a pick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Chat GPT doesn't know there's right. linemen in football. Right. Yeah. There's no linemen on the list. Donovan McNabb. Um, I gotta he's go. the all-time leading Eagles passer. I got to go with Terrell Owens. He, he, no. <laughs> what are we doing? How is he not on the list? What are we doing? Right. Chat GPT, again. It's my it's my turn? Yes. I think it's two each, so I'm strike. Randall Cunningham. Number eight answer. There's a huge chief, an obvious one, still up there. Just keep giving him more hints. That's All great. Right. Well, Go that's, ahead, oh, that's great. Tony Gonzalez has got to be on there. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I thought about him earlier, then I forgot about him. Both playing with two strikes. So. Okay, so here's, here's what's interesting. I'm going to guess this, but I fully expect to be buzzed. But based on chat GPT, I think there's a chance. Joe Montana. You're out. Yeah, okay. uh, I know what they're going to say, and I am not going to say it out loud, and I'm going to lose my mind when this guy's on the top <laughs> ten Eagles of all time. This is outrageous. I'm going to go Kelsey. He's got to be on the list. You're out. That's outrageous. Uh, who is the Eagles? Vic. Is Vic on this list? Good. Thank God. <laughs> I was going to lose it. I was going to lose it. <laughs> Number nine from the Eagles is Brian Westbrook. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he should be ahead of uh, McNabb. Is that Dawkins on the sense. list? Yeah, he's Dawkins, a good pick. he's number five. Ah, I should have guessed pick. him. Good pick. And then number six from the Chiefs, Willie Lanier. Willie Lanier. Okay. Oh, that yeah. was yeah. before my time. But. Yeah, it is. But, no, this uh, this list has got some real issues. <laughs> Much like all the rest of chat, GPT, <laughs> the say. entire company, artificial intelligence, Skynet, Terminator. We're all going to – it's awful. This is atrocious. So, Name the nine U.S. states without an FBS football team. I mean, this is really being leaned heavily towards the opposition here, Steve. You talking about me? And Coach Sergio. Uh, Coach Sergio is up first. Montana. Is the number five answer, by the way. So. Uh, Alaska. Alaska, number seven answer worth three points. North Dakota. Number one answer. I'll go South Dakota. Number two answer. New Hampshire. I guess next guess. Or yeah. sixth answer. Uh, let's go with Maine. Maine? Maine. Number four answer. Vermont. Vermont is is on there. And it I wasn't is, sure about that one. Is the number nine answer worth one point? Uh, I'm going to go Delaware. Yeah. Delaware. Good pick. I wasn't sure it if the University of Delaware is D1. Or good pick. Is the number three answer. So good pick. Seven points to you. We got number eight left on the board. Yeah. I don't know, Stephen. Uh, I'm going to go Rhode Island. Two points. <sighs> good guess. Four. And the top ten fantasy football finishers for the 2020-2021 NFL season PPR me start right yes so 20 would have been covid let's go with yeah. let's go with patrick mahomes he is the number five answer christian mccaffrey lamar jackson tom brady number 10 answer super cup Aaron Rodgers. Number two answer. Man, I'm going to strike out, and Sergio's going to take the lead. Travis Kelsey. You're done. Hmm. Cam Newton. One strike left. Okay. Five quarterbacks on this list still. Drew Brees. Oh. Number nine was Ryan Tannehill. Number, <laughs> <laughs> number eight is Devontae Adams. Oh, should have got that one. Number seven is Russell Wilson hmm. with Seattle. Number six is Deshaun Watson. Number four is Alvin Kamara. Number three is Kyler Murray. And number one is Josh Allen. Oh, Josh Allen was number one in the 20s, 2020? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I would so, have guessed Justin Herbert. He wasn't on that list either. Our last question. This is it for third place. 
uh, Coach Churchill, you are up first. Can you name the longest championship droughts in sports history that is currently active in the Big Four, top 11? And if you can name me the year or how how many years long the streak is or name me the year the last time they won, last the, time champion, they won the championship, yep, I'll give you – This is active right now. Yes, I'll give you okay. the bonus points that correspond to that placement. So if it's the number one answer and you got that year right, that's 11 points as well for bonus. And this is hockey, basketball, baseball, football. Uh, Remember, hockey's not a sport. I would say uh, – Athletes. Well, I'm not even going to lie. Hockey's not even on there. So it's, it's just big three. Okay. Football, so, basketball, baseball. Just right. gave you a hit. And if they've never won – Never won is on there as well. But it's just, but it would be by their uh, franchise history, so the, their first year in the league. Okay. And we welcome back here to Bevel East after a little tornado warning. Stopping our game, we will resume at a 6-6 score, and we are getting ready to go. Everyone's been left to, or everyone's been allowed to enter back in the gym. We are getting ready to start back up. It's 6-6. Here come the teams, and we're getting ready to go. Stuart Sackley, glad to have you along. We're going to get everyone warmed up for the next two or three minutes or so, and we'll get ready to play some volleyball. Let's get this one going again, and this is a situation we haven't ever been in before. We've had, I mean, thunderstorms threatened Tuesday at Slough High. We were able to get that in. I, I was talking with uh, Coach Nesbitt before the before JV began. He's like, if we're under a situation where we get, you know, thunderstorms, bad weather, we're going to get out of here. Don't even try and do an interview. And I said, all right, we'll see what happens when we get to that point. And luckily everything was good, and we were able to get out with interviewing. And without with the, with, with the wind, nothing bad happened, and – we got a tornado warning here and a little, you know, I spent, spent a little time outside watching the weather. I, you know, being, uh, being around uh, Coach Blomberg, who is the assistant AD, and Mr. Larson not here, so he's kind of the guy that's in supervision tonight. And talking with him, just trying to get our update, my, the update so I can, you know, be ready to go at this start time, which we have now. So here we go. Uh, again, it is 6.51. We're getting ready to play some volleyball at 6.6. If you're just joining us, we've been under a tornado warning for about the last, what has it been, almost an hour now, I think, right? Uh, but we're getting ready to play some volleyball, and we're, uh, we'll get this one going shortly at 6.6. Here in midway through set one, the teams are going to warm up for a few minutes. I was talking with uh, Coach Blomberg and Dr. Lane, and they said it's going to be a short warm-up, so we will see how long short is for this one here. We'll be back. We'll be back in a moment. This is Lancer Volleyball on the Bevel East Broadcast Network.
Welcome back here to Belleville East. It is 6.55 here uh, in Belleville at the campus of Belleville High School in the Lancer Gym. We have been let back in, and the teams are getting ready to go again as we were under a tornado warning. We're getting ready to play resume here in this first set. 6-6 six to six was the score, and it was uh, right after a point that O'Fallon uh, had uh, tied the game. I think, or was it, yeah, well, I can't remember who got the last point too long ago. Anyway, point was scored, and Coach Blomberg came over to discuss with that the ref by the scores table. And, again, Coach Blomberg and Mr. Larson or our, uh, who are our administratives, they usually um, usually don't interrupt play. And I, as soon as I saw Coach Blomberg come over, I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I don't like this at all. And I was, again, kind of thinking the weather, and here we are, and they were stop play, Coach Pageant. Uh, our PA let it let everyone know, and then we uh, went off for a bit, but we're back to go, back uh, ready to go. So here we go, and we may uh, we'll see. You know how late we leave the gym tonight. I mean, obviously we're thinking three sets probably between these two, which is not a uh, bad thought, you know. And uh, well, here we are. We'll see how late we leave after all of this. It is going to be. We're going to get ready to go at about 7:04, I would say because we're going to get two more minutes of Bevel East warming up and another four for O'Fallon. Bevel East had four, and there was two minutes originally on the clock to pass and, you know, get stuff on each side of the court, get teams ready up, ready to go. And now, after all that, each team will get four minutes. Lancers have less than 90 seconds now, and Bevel, uh, after Bevel East is done, it will be O'Fallon's turn, four minutes to warm up, and then we're going to get ready to play in this one. Six to six is our score in the first set, and uh, Tornado warning. I'm down at the scores table as soon as I happen. I'm talking with Coach Pageant and uh, both missing, uh, both Coach uh, Funk and Miss Funk, and I was, you know, we're trying to, you know, we're never got a lord on our phone at all, so just came in randomly kind of and wasn't expected at all and waited and waited and waited, and then uh, I got the one that uh, said 7.15, and that's the time I thought we would be ready to go Coach Blomberg was saying it's 7.15, 7.15 will be the time everyone's going to be let back in. And then I was uh, waiting, waiting, waiting. And now uh, it is 6.50, which is a good time because we're going to play uh, just a little bit more, a little 25 minutes sooner, which is always good. Get this one in. And this is what I was hoping, you know, with the as this as everything was going down, I was hoping that we would uh, not have to postpone this game or, you know, replay it at a later date. That was the – uh, the main thing I was was making sure everyone's okay, and I gotta say our, uh, you know, it's Coach Blomberg being by himself. No, you know, no, Dr. Lane wasn't here. Mr. Daniels, the only one that was one of our principals. Dr. Lane came in right after uh, everything was went down. Did a good job getting everyone to where they needed to be, and uh, I give props to Blomberg for that. He's a great, great. Uh, Great guy, and I don't think he had that in the uh, bingo on the bingo card for his last year before retiring at the end of the school year. Who we, uh, I'm gonna miss dearly. Obviously, I'm gonna miss all my coach, all the coaches here. But Coach Blomberg will be one of those guys that I know I will, but Bubba East will also miss a lot as well. Six six is our score. Bubba East has finished the warm up. So Fallon will now be warming up here in just uh, now, and then we'll be ready to go in just a few minutes here from Belleville East. Um, anyway, as we have a uh, few minutes here before this one, let's go ahead and keep talking some serious history between uh, these two. I know, again, obviously, Belleville East and O'Fallon, uh, you know, these two schools are 10 minutes away, 10, 15 minutes away. They, they played each other three times last year, three times the year before. I mean, I mean, the last three years, Belleville East and O'Fallon's played in the playoffs, and O'Fallon's taken all three. And, uh, these two, were, they're, they're big time rivals, and you know, obviously, O'Fallon knocked off the Lancers into the Lancers season last three years. That's fresh in their minds, and no, O'Fallon wants to win this game, continue staying uh, high up in the Southwestern Conference. O'Fallon four and zero in conference play. Beverly East two and zero, so the winner of this one will have their first place locked up for now. And uh, you know, this is going to be a big game. We already saw six six JV was fair, was off and rolling that, that first set. Beverly East just couldn't. They ran out of gas very early and just couldn't st st keep up with the Panthers. But as the game went on, JV, that second set was a great set, great volleyball, back and forth, close, and 6-6 so far here at varsity. And that's what we have, and it's been a 
close one so far, a great start, and I'm excited to see what the rest of this one has in store. We're about two minutes away from the opening serve, I guess the resum resumption serve, resuming everything. Uh, so yeah, Bevel East, they are have 15 games left. They'll have one more tournament up in Lincoln Way East next weekend. That'll be Friday and Saturday. They have three games before that. Tonight, Tuesday, and Thursday. O'Fallon and I, of course. Edwardsville, Tuesday. West, Thursday, both on the road. And I haven't reached out to West yet, but that'll be something I'll be doing. I'm, and I'm sure, I, I mean, that's something I've always, they, they've always came back and, you know, said yes. They've always welcomed me there. And I've talked to Mr. Betts, who's their assistant AD, and Mr. Munez, who is their uh, head AD. And I've talked to both, and they've always said you're always welcome to come there. So we will most likely have that game Thursday at Bevel. So it's not 100% official, but that's one I, you know, have planned out. And we'll get a confirmation at the start of next week when I get the time to get down and get the conversation going with Bevel West. But they've always been great hosts. So that's Thursday with the Edwardsville being Tuesday. So 15 games left. Eight of those games are going to be conference games for the Lancers, which makes this end part of the schedule very interesting because five of those are the tur are tournament. So you technically have two non-conference games that are not tournament games and then eight conference games. So it's crazy how these last 15 games are built, and two of them are against O'Fallon, two are against Edwardsville, two against West. Those are the three toughest teams in conference play. They're all uh, top four in the conference. It's going to be tough, and I like, I like how that schedule's built, and we'll see if it pays off. For Bubbly's. Lancers are 11 and 36 in program history versus the Panthers. O'Fallon, their season, they went, they've played in two tournaments so far. Same thing with Bubbly's. They went three and two and finished seventh out of 24 teams in the Chicago Mar Marist tournament uh, to open the year. Went three and two and, it, and they played some very tough teams, very tough competition. They did, did pretty solid. You know, open up the year, you go three and two like that, but they did a lot better this past weekend at Fort Somewalt South in their tournament. They went 3-0-2 to capture first place, and they defeated CBC in three sets. A team that Slew High took down in four last week, they defeated them in three to claim the championship at Fours and Wolf South in the tournament. O'Fallon's take on, taken on four com common opponents with the Lancers. All those games, of course, are conference opponents. They're 4-0. They're also going to play Altoff Slew High. That's at O'Fallon this year. That was at Slew High last year. O'Fallon lost in four to that great team and Maryville Christian. O'Fallon was the first Metro East team to make the state tournament. That was two years ago. They've since then went back to back last year and the year before to get to the state tournament. And they were the first Metro East team to win a game and to get to the semifinals out of the Metro East area, which is, it just shows you how, I mean, they've always been a solid program and they made the uh, state tournament, I forget, maybe 2014 or 2015, I think it's 15. It was that they made the state tournament and did not win a game. And uh, they went last year, got a win, and then lost the next two to finish the fourth against again. Very tough competition. It's tough being up there in Chicago. We talked about it la this week after the Chicago tournament, last week going into the tournament. You're going to face some tough teams. All right, here we go. Are you ready, folks? Let's do this again. 6-6. Six, six. I'm trying to see. I'm interested to see if the vibe, the energy is going to be matched. Is it going to be uh, kept up with what did we add before the uh, delay that suspended this game? And who has the serve? And we're going to clear some stuff right now. we got to clear the balls out from the warm-up. So we got to figure out. Again, you got to restart from exactly where you were. Rotations have to be exactly the same. Who's out there, the lineup, who's serving, who serve is it. Everything's got to be exactly the same. And, it, you know, it's going to take me to figure out. Referees are figuring that out now. Make sure everyone that's supposed to be on the floor is on the floor. We don't get no violations, nothing called. O'Fallon will have the serve. And here we go, boys. Let's do this. 6-6, six, six, O'Fallon will have the opening serve. Jack Henhausen will have it out of the delay that lasted over an hour at 7.04 p.m. 6-6, six, six, Panthers, Lancers. And we're glad to have you along. Steven Stock with you. Panthers serve. Going left to right. We're underway. And it's out. Lancers have the first point. Out of the delay. They take the lead back. It's 7-6. Well, here we go. Out there for the Lancers. Tyce Watson coming in for Garrett Byers. He's followed away. Caleb Day, August Warder, Jack Byers, Keegan Rose to serve. And Cam Dejard Ace to Libero. Keegan Rose for his first serve. He usually start dates off, and we have a whistle. And I think they're going to get the Lancers for a 
Oh, they're gonna say redo it, I guess. That's what happened earlier in O'Fallon to JV. They didn't, they served it before I guess the refs were ready or whatever, and they gave the Lancers a point. So we're gonna redo it. Lancers still lead 7-6. Rose's service over. to it left side off the set. It's in. O'Fallon responds on the left side. 7-7. Seven, seven. That was Elijah Sam Princey. I probably just mispronounced that. He is a sophomore who just got the kill. We're tied up at seven. Another serve coming. Now for O'Fallon this time. This serve is a line drive right to Byers. Throw it for Rose. And they will just tip it over. O'Fallon in the middle. Set. Over. And a kill for Max Westfall, a junior middle. And O'Fallon has taken the lead back. They opened up with a 3 0 lead. He scored three straight. They take the lead here, 8 to 7. Another serve for O'Fallon. Top net got over. Deidre Nate diving plays there. Rose, Werner, but it's out. 9-7. Panthers have scored three straight. They lead by two. 6-6 six, six out of the delay. And now O'Fallon, a 3-1 three run. Three to one run. 9-7, another serve for O'Fallon. This one's Byers, Rose, set, day! Caleb, but he had it out on the right line, and it happened again, just couldn't keep it in. And 10-7, O'Fallon has scored four straight. They open up 3-0 in this game, and now another run. Another serve for the Panthers. I believe this is Jaden Barrigal. I'm trying to look at the number. That is out, service error. And I believe that is Barrigal, he's pretty tall. And it's 10-8, Lancers get a point. He'll be subbed out for Jackson Becker. Don't have the height and weight on these Panther guys, but Barrigal, I would guess, is gonna be a, a, definitely over six foot. I mean, that's a give me. Here is August Warner to serve it. That is gonna go right to the libero. Patel, you gotta watch out for him. He's only a sophomore. Left side hit, it's over. Warner, Rose, Tice on the right side over. O'Fallon up by two, set to it, left side, blocked. O'Fallon will try it again. Patel, set middle, back row, in on the left line. O'Fallon makes it 11-8. IJ Sambrance, I think that's how Coach Padge is pronouncing Zambrance will serve it here. Try, keep trying to get that pronunciation right. Dejanay, Rose, Byers, Jack attack, hello! Jack Byers has been unleashed. 11-9, Drew Knightsley will come in for Caleb Day. Let's see if Drew can do the same thing he did on Tuesday. He was phenomenal on Tuesday against Slu High. We'll see if he can do the same thing here. This one's in the middle. O'Fallon, little tip over. Drew is there, whistles on O'Fallon. For a violation, the Lancers make it a one-point game. It's 11-10. Two straight by East. They're going to try and counter O'Fallon. They scored four straight East, trying to make it three straight to tie. Here come the Panthers. Throw it left side off the set, off the block. Point O'Fallon on the left side. Nathan Fink will get the kill. you got to watch out for that guy. I mean, if uh, as Drew Knight's out, Caleb Day is also out with Dejanay coming back in. If you you got to look... At a found, if you say, hey, if there's one guy you got to stop tonight, it's Nathan Fink. They have other guys as well. They have a balanced team. They got a lot of guys that can play, but you have to stop one. You have to pick one. It's Nathan Fink. Right side. Tice had it blocked. Out of bounds into the crowd. Lancer point 12 to 11. One point game, and it will be Tice Watson to serve. See if Tice can. Tie this baby up. This one is over in the middle. O'Fallon go left side off the block. O'Fallon have to bring it back. That's over the net. Schultz had it blocked. He'll try it again. Byers, Rose. Byers had it blocked. Great play in the middle. That is a heck of a play. Brett Meek was in the middle and he made the play. 13-11 and Byers going to get there. I mean, he put it in a perfect spot where Byers couldn't get there. Tice Watson out. Garrett Byers in. Ian Shirley, a junior setter, will serve. Him and 
Adam Chastin are the two setters on this team. And Chastin not bad as a sophomore, but so is Shirley. He's pretty good as well. Rose, August, tip over, deflect the net in the middle. O'Fallon will throw it right side. And there is Warner on a dig. Rose, left side, Byers, Patel, nice play. O'Fallon, throw it back left side. Tip over near the line, Byers is there. Rose, set, Warner! Was it it? Was it with the touch? They're going to say off the touch. Off the touch for electric kill. August Werner. 14-12. O'Fallon by two. Just got to stay with them. What would be the biggest thing? 14-12. Werner's hit into the net. O'Fallon will serve this one. Dejernay is Nathan Fink, the one serves. Rose, Warner, Patel, nice dig. It's out, though, on the Lancer side. 14-13. I tell you, it's hard to aim where you want the ball to go off a dig. Can't control it. It's hard to. Dejernay will serve for the second time. The senior Lapero for Pavelis. Dejernay serve right to Patel, his counterpart. O'Fallon. Throw it left side, into the net, we're tied at 14. <laughs> 14, 14, Lancers need to see if they can take the lead here. Haven't led since the first point since resumption at 7-6. Dejerne right in the middle of foul, this is a perfect play. They're gonna set it left side. There is Garrett Byers, Keegan Rose, Jack Byers, Patel on a dig, O'Fallon set from the back row, into the left line. Garrett couldn't get there. 15-14, O'Fallon will take the lead back. Panthers will have Jack Hinhausen, who was the opening serve out of the resumption, serve here for the second time. 15-14. Serve, Byers, Rose running for it. Left side, August. That's in! Back right corner, August Werner with the kill. We're tied at 15. Man, could we, I mean, August, just got to get him going. Tyce Watson will come in for Garrett Byers. Keegan Rose will serve. I just, man, I mean, Warner is number one in the St. Louis area. And kills per set for a reason at 4.96 as of today. Almost at five, was at five on Tuesday. Blanco Fallon can't make a play, and the Lancers take the lead. And guess who it was? Number nine, August Warner. 16-15, East leads by one. Another serve coming here by Keegan Rose. This one is over in the middle. In the middle, had it blocked. O'Fallon to center over, and Keegan Rose couldn't make a play. I mean, he just threw it down. Great play by the Panthers to tie it. 16-16, and it will be, it's got to be Barragel, right? Because it's no 18. There's no 18 on the roster. It looks like an 18. It's got to be 10, then, if it doesn't look like an 8. Barragel is a senior right side, also a, a middle. Dave Janay on the dig. Rose, left side, Tice, little tip over. Over by the Panthers, Dejerne, Rose, right side, August, had it blocked on the O'Fallon side. Point, Mr. Werner. 17, 16 East by one, and it's August Werner to serve. We need an August ace. He will serve it here. Warner, right to their libero Patel, had it blocked by Byers, and did he go, oh, no, it's gonna be Otto Fallon. Net violation on the Panthers, give the Lancers their largest lead of the game at two, 18-16. Another serve here for Warner. This one's too strong and out, 18-17. One point game. O'Fallon's Elijah Sambrosi, Sambrosi will serve it. We'll try Sambrosi, I think that sounds right. That's out, Lancer point. They get the lead back by to two. They get a service there, 19-17. Caleb Day, 
Cam Dejernay out, Sebastian Schultz, Drew Neitzlin in, Neitzlin to serve for the second time. I love Coach Neitzlin, but he gave Neitzlin a spot, an opportunity, because he shined on Tuesday. I want him to keep shining. I like, he's played great on JV, deserves a spot, deserves an opportunity. Rose, Warner, too strong and out. 19-18, O'Fallon back within one, and it will be Neitzlin out, Dejernay in, so the Lancers will have it, a Libero, and it's that substitution's Actually, if you were to have to write it down, it's Knightsling out, day in, and then day out, Dejerne in. Rose, left side, fires, hits her right at the Lopero Patel. He'll pass over O'Fallon. Gets it over, Dejerne, right side for Tice. Over, Patel, middle, set, back row, over, Rose. Dejerne, Werner, he hit it too strong and out again. Tie game at 19. Nineteen, nineteen. It will be Patel. The sophomore libero is averaging 3.8 digs per set. And has a 96% service percentage. That's going to go down. It's out. Lancer point, 20 to 19. One point game. Tyson Watson serving at the junior. His serve is over, O'Fallon set. Left side, it's gonna be in the net! Ran out of room! Lancers by two, 21-19, and the Panthers need a timeout! 21-19, Lance set one. This is Lancer Volleyball on the Bellways Broadcast Door. We'll be right back. Here is Tice out of the Panther timeout. He'll serve it right to left on your TV screen. Two-point game. Watson serve is in the middle. O'Fallon right side in the middle. Great play by Brett Meek. Gets the kill, and Panthers execute right out of the timeout, 21-20. One-point game. Ian Shirley will be serving it for O'Fallon. Trying to tie the game. This serve is over. Warner, Rose, Byers! Jack attack, hello! 22-20, Jack Byers on a kill. He could just destroy the ball is Jack. 22-20, Lancers by two. Another serve here for Byers. This is his third. Open the game, serve it for the Lancers. It's over. Patel in the middle off a set on the right side by Fink. He'll get it for a kill. 22 21. It's a one point game. This set's going to go down the wire, it looks like. We knew it was. These two teams, man, they're right there, right. This, man, they're so competitive, so close. We knew it was going to be a battle, and here we go. Might be some of the best volleyball you'll ever watch all year. Warner. Rose, Schultz hits it over. O'Fallon from the back row, it's blocked. They just send it back over to Meek. Dejerne, Rose, left side, Warner, kept alive. No, it hit the floor. Lancer Point, August Warner, he'll get a high five from Nesbitt, and it's 23-21, Lancers by two, they need two. Cam Dejerne has been reliable from the service line in his career as a Lancer. We need two from him, I say. Let's get two right here from him. This is his third serve of the evening. We could say evening. It's 7.20. Dejerne will serve this one. O'Fallon set left side. It is too strong. Out. Set point in favor of the Lancers. 
24-21. How huge would it be to take this first set? Come on, Deidre, let's end it. Gambit, let's go. Over, Patel to his counterpart in the middle. Right side, Fink, it will land. Sorry, Miguel has the kill and O'Fallon keeps it alive. 24-22, they need two straight. And we talk about Bavalese with their backs pushed against the wall all year battling adversity. O'Fallon's a team that's gonna do the same thing. They're gonna battle. They want their backs pushed against the wall. They'll find a way to get out of it. They'll find a way to get out of that corner. And now it's gonna serve. Game on the line. Day! Set two! Lanthers win! Set one! 25-22! Set two! Here we come! Caleb Day puts an exclamation mark to the end of set one. Beverly says defeated O'Fallon in the first set. 25-22. Set two we go. After a break, this is Lancer Volleyball on the Beverly's Broadcast Network. Bevel East did not take a set last year at all against O'Fallon. In the three games they played, they lost in six sets, zero to six. In fact, they haven't won a set against the Panthers since May 12th of 2022 in a three-set loss to the Panthers at O'Fallon. Bevel East just took the first set, winning here 25-22, and we get ready for the second set. I'm Steven Stockley, glad to have you along on a Thursday evening. Bubbly's just making a little history there, but we need one more set to make it even better. The Lancers have lost nine straight games against the Panthers going back to 2021. In 2021, the Lancers lost the second matchup of two against O'Fallon in the regular season in two sets. They were then on to lose the in the playoffs to O'Fallon, losing in three sets. They look here to get a, their first win against the Panthers since 2021. Steven Stock with you here, as I mentioned. What a great first set of volleyball. That was great, and I hope stay tuned for the second set. I mean, that first set had everything you could ask for. Two very good teams here in the Metro East area. We are thankful, we're lucky tonight, we're grateful to have these two great teams battling out between with the conditions outside right now. We have volleyball to bring to you right now with two very, very good teams. I tell you, I, I love to have you along here. Hope you have as much fun watching that first set as it bring it to. That was great. I mean, I've called some great games, some great volleyball games. and I mean, it's always a battle it's against O'Fallon, and we'll see what set two has in store here for us. For Bevel East out there, Sebastian Schultz, Jack Byers, Keegan Rose, Garrett Byers, Caleb Day, August Twarter, Cam Deja, Hazel LaBarrel waiting to come in. For O'Fallon, they have Jackson Becker, Ian Shirley Patel is their libero, and Ian Patel waiting to come in for, let's see, Max Wetfall's also out there. Elijah Zambrizzi out there also with Nathan Fink, and I think Jaden Barrigo, am I missing him? Nope, we're, they're going to have, well, that's, who else are we missing? Oh, Brett Meek is the one we're missing. Okay, and Patel's going to come in for Becker, I assume, and then, oh, he's going to come in for Barrigo, so Barrigo will come in for Becker. 
Lancers will start off this second set serving. Garrett Byers is going to start this off. It was Jack Byers that start dates off in set one to start the game, but we got Garrett Byers start off here in set two, and Coach Nez has been changing that up over the last few sets. I like that. You know, play those adjustments. Why not? Here we go. Let's see what we got in store for set two. Lancers trying to see if they can make it a set shutout and claim first place in the Southwestern Conference for now. O'Fallon in first at 4-0. Bubble East in second at 2-0, and it's followed by Edwardsville at 3-1. Weston fourth at 2-3. Alton in fifth at 1-4. And and Collinsville in last and at 0-4. Here we go. Set two. Lancers will serve. Right to left under TV screen. It's over. O'Fallon on a setter top has put it down right in the middle and a great play by Ian Shirley and he's got this boys up one nothing here to open up this second set he'll go back to serve as well what did coach Padge I tell you about Tuesday it always feels like the person that gets the point gets the kill goes back to the service line and uh, here we go Ian Shirley got the point he's gonna serve over Warner Rose trying to set her top of his own it got blocked and now we gotta send a free ball and it, it's gonna get denied two nothing Panthers have claimed the first two. They claim the first three to start the game in set one. Another serve coming for Shirley. Warner, Rose, Byers, point, kill. Jack Byers, hello, Jack. Welcome back, two to one. He'll go back to serve. See if we can tie the game. Two to one, Byers is into the net. Three to one on the server here. Nathan Fink, the senior, averaging four and a half kills per set. 0.7 aces and 1.7 digs per set. That one is over, Garrett Byers hits it in the crowd and it's an ace for Fink, four to one, O'Fallon. How about this stat for you? In the sectional championship last year against Lincoln Way East, a two-set win for O'Fallon. He had 11 kills in those two sets. He is an incredible athlete. That one's over. Byers, Rose, Warner, Patel, one-handed play. Keeps it alive from the back row, deflected. Byers jumps up, keeps it alive. Dejane, Warner into the net. Five to one, O'Fallon gaining some early momentum here in set two. And we talked about when they're uh, battling adversity, when their backs are against the wall, they're gonna battle with you, they'll battle. And here we go. Fink, it's in the net though, so Lancer's on the service there. We'll get a point, five to two. Sebastian Schultz out, Caleb Day in, and it will be Cam Day back to serve. His serve is over, diving play by Patel, set in the middle, tip over, Warner, Rose, left side, Warner, tip over again, lands in the middle, just a simple play by August, and it works, five to three, Lancers are within two early, it's set two. Another one for the senior libero, it's for Beverly, stage Rene, serve, goes to his counterpart, Patel, set middle, left side, had it blocked, O'Fallon will try it again, it's gonna go right side. This one, it's gonna land right in the middle. Great play by Barrigal on the right side. 6-3, I mean, he's not far behind uh, Nathan Fink. He's averaging two and a half kills per set. He can play two. Talk about a balanced team in O'Fallon. They got their big guys. Nathan Fink is definitely headlined, but they got guys that can play. Top that got over and Day. Hit it backwards, 7-3, it's an ace for Henhausen. A sophomore, and it's 7-3. O'Fallon by four, they lost the first set by three, 25-22. Next one for the Panthers is over right in the middle. Byers, Rose, left side, August, tip over, O'Fallon. It's gonna go in the middle, or middle set middle right side, and that is in. Barrichell, another kill, and it's 8-3. O'Fallon by five. It's their largest lead of the game. Lancers gotta slow down and just stay in this. We talk about battle and adversity. They've, they've done a good job staying in these games. They gotta stay in this game. They're, they haven't been blown out yet 
in a set besides the first one against Lincoln Way East, and that got blocked. A great play in the middle by O'Fallon's Max Westfall, and it's 9-3, O'Fallon leading by six. That's the only set the Lancers were blown out in. They lost 25-12. They were never uh, in it besides the start and up in Chicago this past weekend, and they've been in every, and then every other set, even if with, in the losses. Byers, Rose, Warner, we need a response, August. It's hit over. Rose, Deidre left side, Warner, just out. 10-3, O'Fallon by seven. Coach is gonna take a timeout, he will. Coach Nesbitt's gonna take a timeout. He said he signaled it. He signaled it twice. Now they got it. All right, there we go. 10-3, O'Fallon leads. It's set two. This is Lancer Volleyball. I'll be back after this. I'm gonna come out of it. Timeout with still 25 seconds left. I want you to see, uh, you, maybe you'll see a little bit of your bottom right corner. I want you, that first part of these 30 seconds, the players were gathered. There was no coach Nez, but he was talking with his assistant coaches. Now he has joined the players huddle, but it was a pl player timeout and a coach timeout that were just separated. Now they're gonna join and get ready to play out of the timeout. I just find that interesting. Just look at those little things. If coaches talked about it all the time, these guys are smart, they know what to do. They don't need me telling them what to do. They can play. And time out there, about the first 30 seconds or so were players only. Henhausen will serve for O'Fallon out of the timeout. Byers throws it back. Dejanay, Werner, over. 10-3 Panthers, left side. That is in, what a play by Elijah Sambrosi. And it's 11-3, O'Fallon by eight. I mean, he found that right line. It was a perfect spot. Nature Day couldn't believe it. Panthers, their largest lead, it continues to grow. Bellies has got to get back in this. Garrett Byers at the net, hit over by Bergel, and it's 12-3. Panthers by nine, and they can get this to double digits here. Another serve for Jack Hinhausen. This one is over, Garrett Byers, Keegan Rose. Werner hits it over, O'Fallon, set middle, back row. That is off of Garrett Byers, hits the scoreboard. It's 13-3, and O'Fallon leads by 10. Drew Knightson's gonna come in, he'll come in for Garrett Byers. Drew Knightson made a lot of defensive plays Tuesday against Sioux High, we need to make some here. We gotta find a way to get a point. We gotta find a way to end this O'Fallon streak. We gotta find a way. End it here. Lancers already called one timeout. This one is over. Warner, middle, Rose. Day! Hello, Caleb! A Caleb Day kill. It must be another day that ends in Y. Ty swats it in. Drew Knightsland out. There's a big play and a kill for Caleb, and it will be Keegan Rose back to serve. Come on, Keegan. He'll serve for the first time in the set. The junior setter. Number one in the St. Louis area in assist per set at 11.5. This one's over near the net. Throw it left side, Lanchers were not ready. Just right in the middle. Lanchers could not do anything there. O'Fallon gets it back. They lead by 10, 14-4. Varga will serve it. His serve to Warner. Rose set August over the middle near the net. Ty sends it back off the net. Westfall, middle, hit over. Warner, Rose set August. Whistles, point Beverly. Net violation on the Panthers will get the Lancers a point back. 14-5, August to serve. Come on, August, we need an August ace here. Mr. Warner, 
just out. That was close on the back line. 15-5, O'Fallon back by 10. So if we think about this here, Lancer's got to go on a 19-9 run right now in the next few minutes. I mean, that's the least they could, that would have to do. Let's go 19-9. Pretty much go two for one. Next serve by O'Fallon's out. Lancer's going to point back. 15-6. Uh, and uh, Bevelus has made comebacks like this. I mean, it's not... Not, it's not in, impossible, but it's going to be a tough challenge, especially against the Panthers. You, something I talked with Coach Nesbitt after the sectional semifinal game, that's going to go out last year. I talked to him after the game, and I said, oh, Fallon doesn't make many mistakes, and when they do, they're going to come back at you and respond. They're going to find a way to make up for it, and they always do. 16-6. Ten-point game, Patel the libero. He's a sophomore will serve. It gets it over. Rose, Watson, right side. Oh, Fallon sent it back net level. Nice play, Jack Byers. It was right on the net. Byers puts it down, 16-7. Tyce Watson to serve. Serve by Tice. This one's in the middle, right to Patel. Set, throw it in the middle. Meek, Dejernay off the scoreboard. Mink with the kill, 17-7. Garrett Byers coming back in. He'll come in for Tice Watson. We, we cannot get in this lead at all to this deficit. We, we get, I mean, talk about chipping at it, chipping at it, chipping at it. We can't chip at it. I've been able to do that. Ian Shirley, a junior setter, will serve it. It's over. Rose. Byers in the middle. O'Fallon. Left side. Three ball. Right in the middle. It's Warner. Rose. Set. Schultz over in the middle. Panthers, Patel, throw it left side. Dejardet off the dig. Rose, Warner, over. O'Fallon, Patel, back row, out. 17-8, nine point game. We've got to nine, we just can't get it to eight. Jack Byers, come on, he will serve it. Fires his serve, it's over, and it's into the crowd as Patel and Bertel converged. An ace for Byers, and it's 17-9. And O'Fallon's gonna take a timeout of their own. Panthers by eight, they need a little Mr. Brightside action. Coach Pat to try to take a page out of the bazoo book, see if we can rally the crowd, 17-9. Rally the troops, as Coach Nesbitt would say. This is Lancer Volleyball on the Bellies Broadcast Network. Out of the O'Fallon timeout, Jack Byers will be the one serving it. Still down by eight, 17-9 here at set two. Lancers took the first set, went in 25-22, and a big second one set as we're in the middle, and it went right back at Byers off the net. So O'Fallon gets a point out of the timeout. They've doubled the Lancer points, 18-9. And this, I, I was talking last year's sectional semifinal after Bevelis lost the first set. And it, it's when you get to a point like this in the second set, when you're up by nine, you lost the first set, it's usually easier for that team to take this rest of the set and take the next one and win the game. So we'll see if that's going to hold. And again, talks about momentum, but that ain't going to come there. O'Fallon gets a kill, and it's back to 10, 19-9. I mean, it's going to take a lot to make a push here late, and it's not impossible. You're going to need to run. Or chips of runs and four or five straight, but what you need 
is momentum. Even if this goes to a third set, you need something to carry over to the third. Rose, left side, Warner. There's a nice play for you. Well, I guess Warner with the kill, and it's 19-10, and it will be Dejane back to serve. Schultz is out. Day is in. Here is Dejane. His serve is in the middle. Patel in the middle, left side, off the block. Warner, Rose, set, Day, and Caleb Day with the kill. It must be another day that ends in Y with the Caleb Day kill. 19-11, Lancers back within eight. They haven't been able to get this to seven. We'll see if they can do that here. They've got it to eight. This is the second time they've got it to eight. Haven't got it to seven. Big play. Dejane, Patel, middle. Hit over off of Day. Warner, Rose, set August. Off the block, going backwards. That's going to land. Let's report. 19-12, August Warner with the kill. Come on. Dejane back to serve again. Got to keep finding a way to get points here. That one's over. Middle, set, right side. Off the block. Two players converge for O'Fallon. They send it over. Dejane, left side. Warner, a little tip over the middle. Patel dive and play. It's back over. Dejane, rose through the net. Warner, hard kill, hard spike. Put down by August. 19, 13, and the Lancers are within six. Another big one for Camden coming up. This one's right to his counterpart, Patel, in the middle. Left side, it's in, and the Panthers respond. Zambrizzi makes it 20 to 13. Well, hey, you chipped at it, you got a few. Gotta do it again, you gotta start another run. Hentenhouse, it will serve for O'Fallon. 20 to 13, late here in this second set from Beverly East on a Thursday evening. Warner. Rose, back to August. Out, no touch. Point O'Fallon. 21-13 and it's back to eight. O'Fallon trying to take this to a third set. Bubba Lee, so O'Fallon played three games last year. O'Fallon took all six sets in those three games. Warner, Rose, back to Warner. Tip overs deny, they'll try it again. Rose, back to Warner, off the block. Kill, August Warner. Lancer point, 21-14. Ty Swanson will come in for Garrett Byers. Keegan Rose to serve. Keegan Rose, 29th in the St. Louis area and aces per set. Almost half an ace per set, point for it. We haven't had one tonight for Keegan. He's due. Rose in the middle, O'Fallon. Go left side, a hard spike, and Zambrisi did it again. Back-to-back -back kills for him off Lancer serves. 22-14. O'Fallon needs three more. This one is out, 22-15. It will be August, come on August, the senior. He's played numerous O'Fallon games since his sophomore year, has not beat O'Fallon in his varsity career. And he says, I know he wants this badly and it's gonna go in the net, 23-15. And right, O'Fallon's getting closer and closer here to force it a third set, they need two more. And Coach Nesbitt still has a timeout left in his pocket. And it will be Nathan McBride, a sophomore, coming in. This will be his first serve. He came in for Zambrisi. Here is O'Fallon's McBride. He's a left-hander. That's out. That's out. Yes. 23-16. We need a 7-1 run. I think that's doable. I think that's doable. Caleb Day will try and get it started. He will go back to serve. Come on, Caleb. 51st in the St. Louis area at aces per set, 0.41. Dig by O'Fallon, it's over. Tice, 
Rose running for it. Fires in the middle. O'Fallon near the net. Had it blocked for fighting for it. Stay. Rose, right side, Tice, come on, we need a Tice Watson kill. It's not gonna happen there. Left side, O'Fallon, there is Day. Rose, uh-oh, awkward angle for Tice. He got it over, but it went around the antenna. He got put at an awkward angle. And we've hit set point in favor of the Panthers. They wanna play a winner take all set three here. Now imagine this was over in Missouri, played best out of five. I don't know if we would be able to do it. We would be here all night. Nam Patel, a sophomore libero, will look to go to a third set. It's over. August, Danger Day, Byers, Patel on a dig. Middle set, left side. Warner with the dig. It's out. Set three. Here we come. Oh, Fallon takes the second set. 25-16. Set three. We're coming. Here we go, folks. Coming up in a minute. We'll have it for you next. This is Lancer Volleyball on the Beverly East Broadcast Network. Glad to have you along on a Thursday evening. We're playing a third set. Steven Stack with you. We have a great volleyball game going here tonight. And winner or go home for any, or winner or lose, go home after tonight for any team. I mean, both of these teams need to be proud of each other for a performance they're putting on for everyone in this gym and everyone tuning in here tonight. This has been a great game here, and I, I this. A lot of props to both teams. They're fighting and fighting and fighting. We're gonna, whoever wins this deserves to win this with how much both teams are putting in. And we're gonna see if that's the Panthers of O'Fallon for the 10th straight game, or will that be Bubba East, who is 11 and 36 in program history versus the Panthers. They want this badly, but so does O'Fallon. Who wants it more? Who wants it more? Coming up. About 30 seconds away from the start of the third set. Bubble East won the first set, 25-22, but it was O'Fallon who took the second win in 25-16. And we're and talk about, again, momentum's with O'Fallon right now, too, and that's the thing I talked about. You gotta kid it. I would hope to make a run to get yourself momentum at the end of the set, something to carry over from the second to the third, and it, that just didn't happen. I don't, I mean, we'll see if it got enough to carry over and make something happen, but a lot of momentum's with the Panthers right now. They played really well in that second set. After a very close first set, they open up a 10 point lead, and it's hard to come back when you're down by 10, especially against the Panthers, who don't make many mistakes. When they do, they'll come back firing right back at you. They take advantage of your mistakes. They make sure that they, they, they make sure you're, you can, you know, when you make a mistake, they make, they take advantage of it every single time. Cam Dejernay will come in for Caleb Day. It's Garrett Byers, August Warner, Keegan Rose, Sebastian Schultz, Jack Byers, and it'll be Garrett with the opening serve. We need a good start here. We didn't have it at set two, and Byers serve is underway, right to left, run away at set three. O'Fallon left side off the block, Warner, Rose, left side, Byers, tip over. 
Well, foul in there, in the middle, over off of Rowe, Warner, and Deidre Day slid out. You gotta watch out near the chairs of the East Bench. Oh, Fallon leads, one nothing in set three. Berchel will come in. I think he's gonna go back to serve. Nope, it's gonna be Shirley. He's out there with Sambrisi. Meek and Fink with Patel the libero. Serve is over, Warner, Rose, Byers! Hello, Jack Attack! Tied at one. And this will, it will be Byers back to serve. One, one game. The junior outside serving it. It was huge in the sectional semifinal game last year against O'Fallon. That's when the eyes really opened up. For me, they've been opened up the whole time, but I think it really opened up everybody's eyes with Byers, and here he is starting now this season. That one's over. Garrett Byers, what a play. Rose, Jack, land on the O'Fallon side. They got this sitting this over. They do in the middle. Byers, Rose, Warner ran out of room, and Warner, I think, said he touched his head. I think he said he went over. Point O'Fallon, two to one, and we're gonna, Warner say it, he's discussed it, our coach Desbitt's gonna discuss with the, saying the line judge ruled something down, they're gonna discuss, so uh, we're gonna see, and, and we'll see what we get. They're discussing right now, and nothing that will change the call, two to one O'Fallon. Nathan Fink, the senior outside, middle. He will serve it. Dejernay, Rose, Werner. Got it, August, 2-2. Two -two. I just hope August can keep doing that. We need to rely on him. He's a senior. He's been in these spots before last year, his sophomore year. I mean, he's been in these spots before, and you got again. This team is experienced; they they're battle tested. It, it, these are the games that get you ready for those big ones in the playoffs, especially in conference play. Here, it's over. Right side, Jaden A. Dive in play. Byers, Warner. Hello, August. Lancers take their first lead. A set three. It's three two. Well, better start than what we had at set two. Uh, got to keep rolling. Got to keep rolling. Deidre another serve. This is over. O'Fallon, throw it left side. Byers can't handle it. Panthers respond. We're tied up at three. Zabrisi with the kill. Tie ball game. Jack Kenhouse will serve for O'Fallon. Penhouse and over. Warner, Rose. Day hits it over. In the middle, O'Fallon, right side on the right line. And oh, that, oh that's out. Oh, they'll call it out. No, wait. Lancer's got the point. Line judge signaled it was in, and O'Fallon's gonna argue that I thought that was in. I'm not, I, I will say that was in. The original ref said it was out, and they're gonna keep the call. Lancers lead four to three. Oh, Fallon is a bit stunned. I'm a bit stunned too. I looked into me. Now they're going to discuss. And here comes the line judge from the back right corner discussing with the ref. Is that he signaled it was in? It looked in. Hold on here. We're going to see. Pavel East will have the point if it stands. And it will stand. Lancer point, four to three. Just a bang, bang play. They would call it in baseball. Down that right line, there you go. Keegan Rose will serve it. Garrett Byers is out. Tice Watts it in. And now O'Fallon's one of their players. That Fink it looks like maybe discussed the call. And they, their conversation ends. Again, a lot of those times, uh, majority, those calls aren't going to get overturned. A majority of the time, they will not get overturned. Usually stands. 
serve coming for Rose, and now we're waiting because we, I think we have a substitution, which they're trying to figure out the scores table. Yeah, we will continue to wait here, and, and I mean we can wait a little longer. We waited an hour for this one. We waited over an hour with the weather delay. We'll wait a little more. Why not? And now the both O'Fallon players are going to huddle. I think the same thing for Bevel East. They're going to talk some things here. Well, they have the extra time. This is the last game of the week. We'll be back, I believe, Tuesday for baseball against the same school at O'Fallon. That's a 4.30 first pitch, 4.15 pregame. All right, we're ready to go. They got it all sorted out. Rose will serve, Lancers 4-3, it's over. O'Fallon, set middle, got it. Westfall ties it 4-4. Junior middle. Tie game, O'Fallon looking to take the lead back. Just early here in set three. Lancers took the first 25-22, O'Fallon took the second 25-16. Warner tip over. Got it, August. Well, they're gonna say a net violation against the Lancers though. We'll take it away and it's 5-4 O'Fallon. They take the lead back. Warner had it, but net violation called. Other serve for O'Fallon, that's out, that's out. Tie game at five. Warner will be back to serve. Come on, August. It would be a good time for August ace, folks. Patel, right side, pass, roll shot, faint from the back row. Warner, Rose, Byers! That's up in the air, off the ceiling. O'Fallon can't adjust. Garrett, Jack Byers has given the Lancers the lead. Back, it's 6 5. Another serve coming for August Warner. It is out. We're tied up at six. Service error by Warner. Die game. Nathan McBride will serve it. Left handed serve. Warner, Rose, Byers hits it over. Patel, middle, fake over. DeJernay, Rose, Tice over. Panthers running for it. Free ball's coming. They keep it alive and they get it over. DeJernay, Rose, Byers, diamond play. Can't follow it up. Lancers take the lead back. 7 6. Drew Knightsley's gonna come in for the first time in set three. Let's see if Drew can make some defensive plays. He's gonna go to serve as well. Need a service run. Nope. Hello, never mind. We're gonna now we're good. Had to make sure we had that. They got the substitution right. 7-6. Here is Drew. Up by one. That's it! That's a nice for Drew! 8-6! Lancers have their largest lead in set three. Perfect spot. And he was going short right Tuesday against the Junior Billikens. He says, let's go long back left corner this time. O'Fallon in the middle. Warner's there as they send it back. Rose, Tice, hits the ref off of O'Fallon. Nine, six. Lancers by three. Man, 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 come on. Another serve for Drew, it's over. O'Fallon, middle, set, left side off the block, going backwards, O'Fallon has to scramble. Patel is there, left side, Finkel to roll shot. Dive and play, Knights lead. Warner, right side, ties through the net, hit the antenna. Boyd O'Fallon, 9-7. Just a tough play when you're so close to the net, 
like that, it's going to hit the antenna. It, it most likely will, and it did. Danger Day is in for Knightsley. Neil Patel, a sophomore libero, will serve. This one, top that got over. Warner, Rose, right side, Tice. Hello, Tice! Mr. Watson has given the Lancers back to a three point lead. It's 10 7. Patel was the one served it. He tried to dig it out. It went right off of him backwards. And it will be Watson serving. It's over. And the net, Lancers, it's going to land on our side. Ian Shirley had his hands on in the middle. 10-8. And Shirley will serve it. Two-point game. Is this not a playoff atmosphere? I mean, what a... Atmosphere this was, it reminds me of that sexual semifinal game at West last year, and Jack Byers has the kill! 11-8, Lancers back by three. It'll be Byers to serve. Come on, Jack, attack, let's go! Byers serves it, Patel. Warner! August with the kill! 12 8. Lancers by four. Come on, Byers. Lancers are largest lead in the third set. Come on, Jack. Let's go. It's over. Patel in the middle. Set. Got it. Great play. They responded well. Kid Camp on the kill for O'Fall at 12-9. Nathan Fink will be back to serve. He's averaging .7 aces per set. .7, he hasn't had one yet today. And it's right to Danger Day. Rose, Byers, it's over. O'Fall on right side in the middle. Back to Fink, top net and it landed. Hit the top net right in the middle. And it's 12-10, East is Back by two. Two point game. All foul at two straight. They've cut the deficit in half from four now to two. Serve is coming. It's off of Garrett Byers. An ace for Fink. 12 to 11, there's the ace I just talked about a second ago. Oh, foul and a chance to tie it. Midway through this third set. Are you not entertained, folks? Are you not entertained? I mean, unbelievable volleyball tonight. Unbelievable. Byers, Rose, Schultz had it blocked. Garrett's there. Rose, Werner, out. And we're tied at 12. O'Fallon has rallied, and they have scored four straight. They can take the lead. Twelve, twelve. It's over. Dejardin, Rose, Werner, August responds. His last hit went out. He gets it this time. Thirteen, twelve. Dejardin will serve. Caleb Day in. Sebastian Schultz out. Come on, Camden. That, that was a bad one. You know, it was a, just kind of, was it the best throw up and throwing up the ball and it barely touched his hands. And 13-13. It'll be Inhausen, Jack Inhausen, a sophomore outside, defensive specialist as well to serve it. This one is over. Garrett Byers, Rose, Warner, tip over. O'Fallon sends it back in the middle. Day, Rose, throw it left side. Warner had it blocked. It's out. They let it go. Point by the list. 14-13. That second set, O'Fallon led by 10. It's a one-point game now. 
Keegan Rose will serve. Garrett Byers out. Tice Watson in, and I'm not. Sorry. Rose will serve it in the middle. Set right side. They respond. 14 14. This game's all tied up. Once again, how many ties are we going to have tonight? How many more? We got a padded line for that, baby. I, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say seven more ties in these this last set here. I think we got seven more left in this one because it just keeps going back and forth. And this is out. East takes the lead back on a service error. 15 14. Here is August Warner. To the service line, the senior. Come on, August. It's over. Patel in the middle on the set left side. Danger Day's there, hits it back. Rose, Byers over. O'Fallon, middle, ready for it. Warner. Day, pass, left side. Byers off the touch. The jack attack with the kill. Lancers by two, and it's 16-14. Warner will serve. This one is over. Oh, foul in the middle. Back row, off the block, going backwards. Rose, Danger Day, near the net. Byers over and he stepped over. Went two more steps over and he went around the, past the line into the net. 16, 15. Here comes O'Fallon. Trying to tie it back up again. Nathan McBride, a sophomore right side and outside. He'll serve it. And the serve by O'Fallon into the net. 17-15. Drew Knights leads in. Caleb Day is out with Schultz coming back in, meaning Danger Day's out. Here is Knights lead. Come on, Drew. The Junior Libero on JV. Trying to make a play here. Two-point game. Drew serve is over. Set, left side, fake, hard one, Rose, and no one's backing up to get there. Warner tried, but can't scramble enough. Day will come in for Knights lead, 17-16. The sophomore libero Patel will serve it. Line drive in the middle. Warner, Rose, Byers coming back. Deidre A, Rose, Schultz, too strong. They want a touch, Lancers want a touch. Won't get it. We're knotted up at 17. Another tie. Patel, another one coming. Do his counterpart, Deidre A. Rose, right side, Tice, backwards. Patel keeps it alive. If they get this over, it's too strong. It's too strong. I mean, I, I mean, I, they almost did that. They almost did that. It got it over. It's going to go out, 18-17. Tice Watson will go back to serve. Tice over, O'Fallon, middle, left side. It's over. Warner, Rose, Byers, dig by Patel. O'Fallon will try it again, left side. There is Tice, Keegan. August, yes! August Warner on the back row makes it 19 17, and the Panthers need a timeout. They need a timeout. Late in set three, 19 17, Lancers lead. This is Lancer Volleyball on the Bellies Broadcast Network. We'll be back.
I'm only up here with the mic, and I'm nervous. The players got to be nervous. I mean, this gym is packed. It's been a great night of volleyball, and the Lancers lead by two out of the O'Fallon timeout. It'll be Tice Watson serving. Steven Stock with you. I glad to have you along. I hope you're having as much fun watching this. It, this a great game between these two schools, these two teams. We'll leave it all out in the court tonight. This is high school volleyball at its finest. Left side, Dejernay, Werner, left side, Byers in the middle, Patel is there, O'Fallon, left side, off the block, Werner, Rose, Byers! Hello, Jack! Hello, Jack! Hello! Lancers by three, and it's 20 to 17. I, I, man, what a game. What a game, and we need five more. We need five more. Another one coming for Tice. It's in the middle. O'Fallon, set, tip over. Danger Ace there, diving for it. Rose, Werner, over. O'Fallon, tip over. Got it. Panthers respond. Ian Shirley hits it over, 20-18. to 18. Garrett Byers will check in for Tice Watson. And Shirley will serve it. 20 to 18. And here it comes. Once we get some more substitutions figured out. Two point game, here it comes for Shirley. This one is over. Warner, Rose, Byers in the middle. He's been huge tonight. Mr. Jack, left side, on the left line, and Fink makes it a one-point game, 20 to 19. It's a one-point game. Late in set three. Lancers won the first, 25-23. O'Fallon took the second, as we're gonna have a discussion now. O'Fallon took the second, 25-16, and it's the Line judge on the left side. Port Bubbleist! Port Bubbleist! They changed the decision, and the Lancers are up by three all of a sudden instead of a one point game. 21 18. Jack Byers going back to serve. Come on, Jack. Come on. The junior was in this spot last year in the sectional semifinal. And it was huge that game for the Lancers. How huge has he been tonight? He has been huge. It is Byers serving. Here we go. Late in this third set, winner take all. Foul 12 2 2, 12 2 and 2, 4 0 in conference play. Lancers 18 and 2, 2 0 in conference play. The top two teams of the conference standings. Byers had it blocked, point 0 foul it. 21 19. I mean, this is gonna go right down the wire. Right down to the wire. We knew it was. That first set did. O'Fallon had control in the second set. Here is Nathan Fink, who will serve for O'Fallon. Fink served coming. Dave Byers throw it left side for Warner. Had it blocked on the O'Fallon side. They play off the net. Patel's hit. Goes around the antenna and in. Warner left side, it's out, and O'Fallon has got it to one, 21-20. What a play by Patel. The libero for O'Fallon, he kept that around the antenna where it was still in play. That's an awkward angle, an uncomfortable angle, and a, a very hard angle to hit it over, and he still did. Fink, the senior, trying to tie it for the Panthers. It's in, an ace for Fink, we're tied at 21. Oh my, Coach Nesbitt's gonna take a timeout. This will be our last of this one, 21-21, late in set three. This is Lancer Volleyball on the Bubble East Broadcast Network.
Steven Stocker with you. What a game, 21-21. O'Fallon has rallied, has tied the game. Coach Desmond takes his first timeout. It will be Fink serving it for the Panthers out of the timeout. O'Fallon one remaining, Lancers one remaining on timeouts. Here is Fink tied at 21. Lancers were just up, up by just up by three, but O'Fallon has scored three straight. Served by Fink. Top net got over. Danger day. Rose left side. Warner. August Warner has given the Lancers the lead back. 22-21. Bavlis executes right away out of the timeout. They hit the first point out. Schultz is out. De Caleb Day's in. Tice Watson's gonna come in. It'll be Garrett Byers out, and it will be Keegan Rose to serve. And we got a list of time out here for a second because the referees are going to check this, make sure the substitutions and everything. It is, uh, I've said this before, it is so very complex down there. I'm glad I'm up here, but again, to me, I, I just want to play the game. I, I, and I, they got to go that right. It's got to be technical and everything. I understand that. I, I'm not trying, I'm not hated on it at all. I'm just saying, I just want to play. I just want to play. Let's get this going. 22-21. Right, they got to get this right, and their referees talking with Coach Desmond right now to get this substitution right. We're ready to go. And the last thing I just want the Lancers to get a whistle. That's the last thing I want a violation against them for uh, invalid rotation. Danger Day hits it right to his little arrow. Patel up the serve. O'Fallon free ball. Danger Day. Rose in the middle. Set day. Caleb. Lancers by two, they need two. 23-21. Garrett Byers is back in for Tice Watson. We're in a big spot. I mean, you get a point here, you're, I mean, this is huge. You'd be in full control, gas pedal down. JJ service over to the Liberal Patel, right side off the block, kill O'Fallon, and they come right back at you. 23-22, Panthers needed that point. They needed that, they could not be backs against the wall needing three. 23-22, Jack Kidhouse, he's had some good serves tonight. He'll serve for O'Fallon. And now we gotta talk substitutions with O'Fallon. Make sure we're good there. They're gonna serve it and whistles. That serve is gonna be not gonna count. And we got a timeout O'Fallon. We said that the last one, the East timeouts are last, so we'll keep it here. What a game tonight. What a game. This has been unbelievable. I don't know how the Bubble East players or the O'Fallon players are playing through this. There's so much pressure. I mean, I'm a, I would be a nervous wreck down there playing it. I'm nervous up here. I'm pacing back and forth, trying to See if Beverly East can win this one. And this, and we've been in this spot before. I, it's not just boys volleyball. I mean, I've had so many close games go down to the wire. And this will be another great one here. And I, again, I talked about it at the start. Of, I think it was this set, maybe the second set, about how much props need to be given to these two teams tonight, win, win or lose for any of them. Props must be given. Credit is due. The, uh, both teams are fighting, they're battling. The, these, I mean, these are some of the best volleyball players, two of the best teams in the area battling it tonight. We got one more at O'Fallon later on this year. And in the playoffs, it's written the cards. It's over, oh, they serve out of the timeout. Rose Day had it blocked, it's out! Game point in favor of the Lancers. Beverly is just trying to pick up their first win against O'Fallon since 2000. At 21, the last win was on April 29th in a two-set win, 25-20, 25-9. They have lost nine straight since then. Garrett Byers out, Tice Watson in. Everyone rises to their feet. These fans at least do. King and Rose, a look to win it. Rose's serve is over, O'Fallon, middle, set, left side, off the block going. Patel is there on the left line. O'Fallon from the back row, it's over. Rose, it's gonna be Danger Day. Right side, Watson. O'Fallon's there is Fink in the middle. Right side, Panthers, Danger Day's dig is into the crowd. 24-23, Shirley on the kill, and here we go. O'Fallon just needs one to extend this to 26. The Lancers couldn't put the Panthers away there. Now O'Fallon has a chance to tie and keep it alive. 24-23, the serve. Danger Day's there. Rose, 
Left side, Watson, it's out, we're going to 26. O'Fallon has came back and has scored two straight. Now they need two to win. Oh my. 24-24, served by O'Fallon. Into the net! Game point again in favor of Bubble East. And guess who's serving? It's number nine, August Warner. Come on, August. Game point. Bubble East trying to make it their first win since 2021 against this team. They've lost nine straight against O'Fallon. Warner service over. Patel's dig is near the net. It's over. Rose, Danger Day. Tice Watson sends it back. Panthers, middle, set, back row, over. Lancers, Rose, Warner for the win. He got it! He got it! Lancers to Pete O'Fallon! 26-24 in the third set. Bevel Ace has knocked off O'Fallon for the first time since 2021. Nine straight losses for Bevel Ace. The streak ends tonight. 26-24, the final at set three. What a game. The Lancers approve to 19-2 of the year. 3-0 in conference play. O'Fallon falls to 12-3-2. 4-1 in conference play. Post game show next year from Emily. Bevel East has knocked off O'Fallon for the first time since 2021. They have lost the nine last meetings against O'Fallon, the last three, last four actually. Bevel East hasn't even won a set against O'Fallon. That changed tonight. The Lancers took the first one, winning 25-22 O'Fallon. 
rallied back to win the second 25-16. The Lancers just took the third 26-24. Bubba East has knocked off O'Fallon. And this is, you can see it on the court when they, everyone came out. This is huge tonight. This is huge. Something that Bubba East hasn't done in quite a few years. And we're getting head coach Joe Nesbitt coming up here. What's on second? Coach, how, how we feeling? I don't know yet. <laughs> I think I'm feeling pretty darn good, but I'm going to need a minute to come back down. Yeah. It was quite a game. Yeah, I, that, I mean, first off, before we discuss, I mean, what a game. These two teams, these are two of the best teams in the area, two of the best teams in the state at showtime. I mean, this was high school volleyball at its finest. I agree. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, I remember our first couple of years when we had a team uh, started in 09, and uh, Austin O'Fallon were very, very good, and their coach at the time, Tim Gagan, always used to say it was like Ali and Foreman, and that's what tonight felt like. We were just trading jabs and, and going for uppercuts and getting some and missing some. And, um, you know, it was it, it, that game ended getting to three. I, I just telling the boys, this is the kind of match that needs to go to three. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad it did and, and glad that uh, we came out. For, for you guys, I know you guys come out strong. You take the first set 25-22. And I, if you look at tonight, even we had that weather delay that lasted over an hour. That made things kind of weird tonight. You guys come back after 6-6. Six, six, get the minds right, take the first set, you lose the second, 25-16. What was that must message to the guys in a huddle going to the third? Well, as the, as the second set was winding down, we, we just kept saying we just want to build momentum. Yes. You know, and I was telling them, this is the kind of match that should go three, so don't be disappointed when it does. Just build momentum, shrink the game, and uh, just try to build some momentum here. And, and uh, they did. I, I'm so proud of the boys. Uh, you know, we had some opportunities and took big swings and had misses and, you know, to stick with the boxing uh, analogy. Um, mm -hmm. But we never we never were down and out. They just kept slugging away, and, and I'm, I'm awfully proud of the perseverance of this team. Yeah, for some of these guys, it's their first win against O'Fallon in their varsity crew. The last win against O'Fallon was back in 2021. Yeah, three years uh, ago, right. It. Yeah, let me get right. a, let me get an exact date for April 29th and a <laughs> two set win. It's been nine straight meetings against still found that resulted in losses in the last th four. You guys haven't even took a set against them. So that first set was mm. huge to get things going and then end up getting the win. And this I mean, this is a huge win for you guys. Obviously, just looking at that fact, but win number 19 you're, and this is a team you couldn't beat last year. And now you guys have got it done. It shows where you guys are at right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really happy with it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I'm, I'm just, uh, the boys deserve this. They earned it. And uh, I'm just, I'm so, so proud of them. I'm so happy for them. Uh, we're, by no means are we done. Yes. Um, but this yes. this was a hurdle we needed to get over. Uh, I'm glad we got over it in, in this first round against them and didn't wait until the second or potentially third round yep. against them. Um, and so, uh just really happy for the boys. And, and also, I mean, we, we talked about this on uh, Monday, just the adversity, just ba being put in that corner and finding ways to get out, and you guys continue to find ways to get out. I mean, we were up 24-22. They scored two straight, tied up at 24, and you guys sat right there and got the next two points in one. I mean, yeah. just kept finding ways to battle through it. Yeah, and, and that's that's a, credit, a testimony to the depth in our lineup. Um, you know, we don't have any rotations where we have one primary weapon, uh, and I think that – that that frustrates uh, the other teams, you know. Yeah, August gets a ton of sets, and um, you know they know that August is going to get a lot of the balls and Jack as well. But boy, when we need to, Keegan can spring it out yes. to somebody else, and um, that keeps them honest. And, and I think we did a good job of of rebalancing or reshifting their defense uh, when the time was right there, as the third set was coming to an end. All right, Coach. Thanks for coming. Congrats thanks, on the win. Your voice will need some rest. Mine does, too. Yeah, so. yeah. thanks good, for being good here, Good win. Bud. Thank you, Coach. We'll be back. Sorry, we're gonna get August Warner. I'm waiting for this man to come up here. He's uh, greeting his fans. I, I guess you could say we're gonna call him his friends, but I'm gonna call him fans. I think he's making his way now. I'm gonna see if I can signal him here. Give me one. Give me one minute here from Beverly.
I have summoned the beast. Hey, do I look cute? The man, man himself, Argus Warner. How's it going, Steve? I, 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 well, I'm asking you. How are you doing? I mean, are you, I mean, you gotta feel amazing right now. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought it would feel a lot better than it does. I mean, it's just another game. Uh, I mean, well, it's a regular season game. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, feel a lot better in, Mar in May and June. For, for you guys, this is your first win against O'Fallon. I haven't beat them since 21, yeah. April 21. I mean, it's. I mean, this is. I know again, nine straight losses. It, it's huge to knock off them, obviously, with that record, but. They're such a great team. This is the win that you guys would like to have, you know, to continue to get better. This is a huge win. Yeah. I mean, I didn't play my, base, my best game. I don't think any of us really on the on the court played our best games. But I think that, that we have a lot to improve on, and we can really show up and really show out in the next couple games we have against them. Yeah. Well, are you guys nervous at all on that floor, especially in those late moments? I don't think so. We were all composed. I think we I all like just that. realized, hey, it's just a volleyball game. Yeah. It's the same game as everyone else. It doesn't matter who's on the other side. And so speaking of that, how big is it for you guys to just rally together as a team? Because, I mean, you guys know what you guys are capable of. You guys have the talent. You guys have the potential. How big is it to rally and say, hey, we can do this. We all we, we play as a team. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's obviously huge. Like, just the level of team chemistry and just, just togetherness we have on this team is really remarkable. We played together as a unit. I mean, the, that last play there is just in transition. Keegan throws up a big, hit it right yeah. off me and Patel's head. Like, it yeah. just – it's just so smooth and everything. We're all on the same page. It's, yeah. it's nice. Yeah. Um, for you guys, uh, win number 19. It, it, I talked, just talked about this the coach. In these 19 wins, there's only been one set, really, that you guys were blown out. That was that Lincoln Way West game. Yeah. 25-12 in that first set. But everything else you guys have been close in. And that's, you know, just this past weekend came against competitive teams. How big is it for you guys to just keep battling through this adversity? Because I feel like you guys get a challenge thrown, a punch thrown, and you're coming right back at the other team throwing one of your, of your own. I mean, yeah, obviously. I, I mean, I just think that we can battle with, through every single team. There's, there's not really a team out there, in my opinion, that we can't hang with. That we, yeah. can, we at least we haven't run into them yet. Yeah. I mean, when we will, when we run into them, we'll know them. But at least for right now, if we're in every single match. Yeah. Feels good. All right, keep up the good work, buddy. You're awesome, buddy. Thanks Thank for you, Stephen. Up here, man. You're good. August Warner, player of the game interview. I, I. I I, I mean, it, it is a great night. And August is a big guy that, because he was on this sophomore, as a sophomore in varsity, he, he's been through this, you know. He, this is a game that he wanted to win. All these guys wanted to win. Two conference rivals, they, Bevel East wanted this win tonight, and they, they got it. They they got it. Um, I mean, it's just huge. I, uh, Bevel East, they need this win. You just heard Coach talk about it. This is a hurdle that you wanted to get step over. Oh, Fallon was the team you wanted to beat. This, because you're going to see these guys round three. There's one more round in conference play, regular season play. There will be a round three for sure in late May. There's Keegan Rose. Drew Neinzlin giving me the uh, thumbs up. I love those two guys. Big games from them too. Drew Drew has been huge tonight I as well. Everybody's been huge. I, I, I got August because he's the guy that, uh, that you know, made some big plays tonight when it counted. And uh, th th it is uh, – you know, and he's a guy that's, you know, very vocal. You can see it on the court. He shows the energy. And that, that's what I like about August Warder is that he's, you know, he's not afraid to show hey, his emotions and fire that team up. You know, that's what, get, I mean, we, I talked about how big it is to fire a team up, but August is kind of that uh, starter. And that's what uh, Bevel East got today out of August Warner and the rest of the boys here tonight. Uh, Bevel East improves. The 19 and 2, 3 0 in conference play. O'Fallon falls to 12 2 and 2, 4 and 1 in conference play. The Lancers are now in first place. I we're gonna do some research tonight. The last time Bubble East won a Southwestern Conference championship, because that's on the line right now. When would be the, when was the last time they won one? And I know we're not even first half through, but that's a little research we may need to do because Bubble East lost to O'Fallon first way through, and that kind of put them out of the running and uh, we'll see what happens now. If they can get through everyone else, I know Edwards Hill's going to be tough. Bubba West is going to be tough for sure. If they can get past those teams and get O'Fallon again, that second time through, everything may, and we'll see what happens. But Bubba East is in first place in the Southwestern Conference tonight. O'Fallon now in second at 4 and 1. Edwards Hill at third at 3 and 1. Bubba West in fourth at 2 and 3. Alton in fifth at 1 and 4. Collins Hill at last at 0 and 4. O'Fallon at Bubba East was the only game of the night, next game in conference play. Is the 23rd of April, so that is next Tuesday. It will be East Edwardsville and Collinsville Alton, while the 25th will be Bevel East versus Bevel West, and it will be Collinsville versus Edwardsville next Thursday. That's the next two days in conference play. Anyway, that will wrap it up on a Thursday. We have been live for over four hours. We had a weather delay. 
I mean, every, this game had everything you could ask for, and uh, we got we got it. What a game! Uh, I I am really really proud of these boys. Her coaches talk about it, but for me though, I these I I I don't I, out of any team at Bubble I know these guys the most. I talk to them the most, and this win really means a lot to them. It means a lot to Bubble East and this program. I'm really so really really proud of the fight tonight they showed, and they never backed down. That's what the saying I uh, talked about in that tournament, Bevel East tournament the opening weekend. They will never back down, and they did not back down tonight. And, I, and things looked rough. They were down by 10. They did not get the start in the second set. They couldn't get much momentum at the end of the second set. They were down by 10 for a majority of that uh, set, and they, I was getting worried, but I wasn't worried enough to say, hey, they were going to lose this game because I always had faith in these boys. They will never back down. They're going to fight, and it showed at the third set winning 26-24. Before I sign off, I talked to Coach Padgett uh, before the game, and I said Bevel East would take the first set 25-20. I nailed it almost, 25-23. Second set, I said O'Fallon's going to win 25-19. I think I said it was 25-18. They won 25-16, but I nailed it. The third set prediction, 26-24. I nailed it. I nailed it. I told I told Coach Padgett, 26-24 before the game, and I just went down to a, uh, before I grabbed Coach. And uh, I had to make sure I told him I nailed it. Uh, but, yeah, I side note tonight, I nailed the prediction. Uh, and and uh, it, it's a good prediction to win. Good prediction to nail. Uh, that's it here from Bubble East on a Thursday. Hey, three-day weekend here at Bubble East, and there's no better way to start tonight with a old Fallon win. Lancers are back in action Tuesday. Edwards will be up baseball diving Tuesday. That's our next broadcast all the year Tuesday. From Beverly East, Lancer Baseball. They take on the Panthers of Wolfound. Continuing on in conference play. Beverly East is 3-3 three and three now in conference play. They got the win over Alton yesterday on a Tommy Kramkowski complete game pitch. Only giving up one run. Ten strikeouts on about 70 pitches for Mr. Tommy Kramkowski. That will be on Tuesday. Softball today against Civic Memorial. Obviously got postponed due to the rain. That makeup dates TBD. We're not going to be out there to softball. Today, I think May 14th against Belleville West if everything goes right because of all these uh, postponements and cancellations. We got some more road games planned for uh, covering this boys volleyball team. We're, I mean, this has been a great journey, a great ride to start the year, and it will be at Edridgeville Tuesday. They boys will be at Edridgeville Tuesday. We're going to be at West probably next Thursday. Uh, I haven't reached out yet, but I'm sure they'll say yes. They always do. They're great people. Mr. Munez and Mr. Betts, great people over at Belleville West. Anyway, that's it for us on a Thursday evening. What a start to the weekend. History made. Belleville East has got their first win against the Panthers in 10 meetings it took. The last nine have been losses. The 10th one since 2021 is a Lancer winner. Three years in the making tonight for Belleville East. History made, and that's a good way to send us off on a Thursday. Have a good rest of your Thursday. Have a good weekend this weekend. Until the next time we see you, we'll see you guys later.